is a presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are St. Louis. Opening day saw the outstanding pitching of the Pirates led by Francisco Liriano. The Cardinals struck out 14 times. Old Buddy down at the hot corner, flashing the leather. David Freeze, he mixed in a couple of hits as well. Now he turned to game number two, a chilly evening from PNC Park. Baseball, next on Fox Sports Midwest. Stop and bat eighth for Mike Matheny's club. Tonight for PNC Park, another showdown in the National League Central Division, the Pittsburgh Pirates and the St. Louis Cardinals. With Jim Hayes, Al Robosky, I'm Dan McLaughlin. Welcome to Cardinals Baseball. Really a different look here for game number two. I'm not sure Mike Matheny anticipated that he would have to do this this early in the season, but Diaz is at shortstop, and Jed Jerko is your second baseman. Well, Jerko has very good numbers against Nice, the starter for the Pirates, so I understand why he's at second base. And, of course, I'd like all of us want to see Diaz. You know, he's a very talented young player. He impressed the coaches and Mike Matheny in spring training. They sent him down early so he'd get some work in play every single day at shortstop and here he is in the big leagues making his debut. He was a 17 game winner a year ago and that is Michael Waka. Waka gets the call tonight against Jonathan Neese. Cards and Pirates comes your way next. St. Louis Cardinals baseball on Fox Sports Midwest is brought to you by Budweiser. This Bud's for you. By Chevrolet. Visit your local Mid-America Chevy dealer for great prices on the all-new 2016 Malibu. 
and by Menard. Save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. Opening week from Pittsburgh and PNC Park. Another chilly night here in the Steel City. Much of the sports attention is on the Penguins, so a sparse crowd here tonight as Michael Waka gets the jacket ready. Make sure you keep warm on this cold, cold night here in Pittsburgh. The opening day game time temperature was 39. The all time low for an opening day in Pittsburgh was 37. So it was chilly, chilly, chilly. Let's turn to our Toyota keys to the game with my partner tonight, Al Roboski. Uh, you see Michael Walker back at PNC Park. Remember, he had that historic game, 13, you know, the re game where the Cardinals were facing elimination, and he was brilliant in that one, taking a no hitter deep into the game. So we've got to make the most of the opportunity as Jerko's going to be over at second base. He's five for nine against Nice, the Pirate starter, and Diaz will be making his major league debut, and we'll go and see what that's all about. Three hitters that have very good numbers against Jonathan Nice in the lineup tonight. Matt Carpenter, Yadier Molina, the most extended look in terms of his resume against Nice, seven for 22, and also Jed Jerko, as you mentioned. Talked to Mike Matheny before the game. I said, what was going on with the replay system and what has been happening to rectify that from opening day? And he said, they don't anticipate any issues right now. They were told it should be fine. That's why we had the long delay for opening day. And he said, thank goodness Joe Torrey of Major League Baseball was here to help rectify that situation. And then they had unlimited challenges, not the ideal situation, but the one that they had to deal with. This is Jonathan Neese. And he'll face this lineup. Matt Carpenter, Stephen Piscotti, and Matt Holliday here in the first. Grichik bats cleanup. Then Yadier Molina. Brandon Moss, his first start this year. Jed Jerko, Alet Miss Diaz, and the pitcher Michael Waka batting ninth. So the Cardinals face another lefty. And remember, opening day, 14 strikeouts. They left 10 on, 11 reach base. They had their opportunities, just could not cash in. Well, Jonathan Nice was 61 of 61 lifetime. Those pitching for the Mets. He came over in an offseason trade for Neil Walker, second baseman. He's a ground ball specialist, so maybe not all the strikeouts, but he'd be happy with 14 ground ball outs. And of course, the Cardinals are going to try and get him up so they can hit line drives. Dobbs tired Auto Center's defense for Pittsburgh tonight. Starling Marte, he's in left field. McCutcheon in center. And Gregory Polanco is in right. David Freeze, your third baseman. Jordy Mercer is at short. Josh Harrison at second. John Jaso is at first. And Francisco Cervelli, the catching duties tonight. And that's again around the horn presented by Dobbs Tire and Auto Centers. Had a nice conversation with David Freeze before the game. You talked about it on opening day. He is engaged to a St. Louis girl. And he said, I just couldn't let her get away. He said, I'm so excited. I'm in a good place. And he, he said, I'm in a good place personally in my life. And also, this is the right place for me right now to be back in the Central with the Pirates. This week only, T Mobile customers can get a free season long subscription to MLB.TV Premium. Go to T Mobile.com slash MLB to sign up now and catch every moment on America's fastest growing LTE network. Matt Carpenter had the lone RBI in that opening game on Sunday against Nice, four for eight with a pair of doubles in the first pitch. is taken low and we're underway here in game two. Matt like Carpenter, like you said, drove in the only run the Cardinals got on Sunday. His next one will be 180th as a leadoff pattern. Isn't that something? Next RBI for Carpenter, number 180 from the leadoff spot, which would tie him with Pepper Martin, who was in the leadoff position for the Cardinals for 10 years. The wild horse of the Osage, a member of the Gas House Gang, Pepper Martin. Of course, we know that last year, Carpenter, not your typical leadoff man, but he led the ball club in home runs and RBIs, and can also finish off rallies. Three balls, one strike. David Freeze way off the line at third base. Mercer near the bag at second, the shortstop for Pittsburgh. 3-1 pitch. 
It's your first assignment with a new team, and I'm sure some nerves for Jonathan Nice here tonight. Absolutely. You know, his bot is riding on it. He is mentioned the second left hand they see they're going to be three in their rotation carpenter pops it falling out of play jeff lock is slotted to have the fifth game so they got three lefties and cardinals need to do some damage against this this is tail of two clubs you know the cardinals lose here they're 10 of the of the last 30 games against the pirates in this ballpark and of course the cardinals dominate against the Pirates in St. Louis. Three and two to count on Matt Carpenter. Not surprising, a full count. And he strikes out to start the evening. Let's turn to the Hyundai pitch arsenal for Jonathan Nice. I can see predominantly the fastballs, but those are going to be sinking fastballs. He's got the cutter, the curve, and a changeup. But if he's on, he's going to get ground balls. Here is Steven Piscotti as he lines it foul and out of play. Played in 63 games with the Major League Club a year ago. Made quite an impression at 305, seven home runs, drove in 39. Fights that off and fouls it back in quickly. No balls and two strikes. It's going to be one of the keys, too, is can these starting pitchers or all pitchers get inside of these right handed batters? Very, very cold here. Nobody likes to hit when it's cold. Inside, one ball, two strikes. Stephen, a Stanford graduate with a degree in atmosphere and engi uh, energy engineering, takes a pitch low. Well, they tried to frame that one, but the home plate umpire would give it to him. Hunter Wind Windlestead. Evens it up at two and two. <laughs> two down. Holiday digs in. A lot of pitches early on have been down in the zone, including this one, Missouri Lottery Fox Tracks. You see the good movement there and out of the strike zone. You also saw the very good cutter that Nice possesses. It's one of the reasons that they brought him here. They targeted him because of that cutter, which is something that Ray Search. The pitching coach of the Pirates preaches time and again. Get in if you're a lefty on the right handed batters. There's a look at Ray, who has done some great work with guys that have been reclamation projects. One ball, one strike on Holiday, who was one for three on the opening game and also drew a walk. Now they're talking about Ray Serge and what he's done with Nicasio, who's going to be the starter tomorrow for the Pirates. He had a great spring. And a ground ball that's hit to short. Cardinals will go one, two, three in the top of the first. The Pirates coming up in the home half. There's no score from PNC Park.
Gillespie's warm up tosses. A look at the lineup he'll face John Jaso, Andrew McCutcheon, and David Fries. Starling Marte, Francisco Cervelli, Gregory Polanco, Josh Harrison, Jordy Mercer, and the pitcher Jonathan Neese. Walker coming off a season in which he won 17 games. He was 17 and 7 a year ago, made the All Star team. And the 24 year old does not turn 25 until July 1st. I have a mixed match, mash in uh, spring training. His last outing was the best. Fastball command will be an issue with him. You want him to throw a changeup, the fastball down, that after two strikes later in the count, you can elevate it and get a, a punch out. Chaso, ground ball, backhanded by Carpenter. One pitch, one out. See Jaso just trying to poke that through that left side. The Cardinals have the shift put on for Jaso in game one and start that way here in game two. Surprising swing at the first pitch. One man that here is because of his on base percentage. But nice little backhand from Carpenter and then the steady throw across the diamond. Here's Andrew McCutcheon. He was 0 for 2 in game one with a walk. Very good numbers against Michael Waka. Eight for 16. Three extra base hits, including a home run. Pirate outfield in general is hit 436 against Waka. 0-1 pitch. Remember in game one when Eugene, the translator for O, went out to visit? McCutcheon was at the plate. First base was open, and it was Yadier Molina who called Eugene out to help translate to talk about how to pitch to McCutcheon. Unbeknownst to the Cardinals, they didn't realize that that turned out to be an official visit. And so they did not have anybody getting loose. And Derek Lilliquist said he wanted to go out and talk to O prior to that. And he said that could have been a terrible situation on a cold day. Nobody loose. Your second visit, then all of a sudden you have to take the pitcher out. So Mike Matheny saying today, we've learned now it is an official visit when he goes out if he's by himself. Something you learn all the time, but uh, you got to pay attention to that. Could have been a nightmare. Yeah, McCutcheon in the two hole now. They kind of feel like one, two, and four. Pilot lineup is what used to be considered three, four, and five, the RBI guys. But the way they build their lineup is built to score on on base percentage and aggressive base run. The analytics have told them the number two spot, arguably the most important spot in the lineup. 30 more times. And a base hit into right field. 30 times more, McCutcheon will get a chance to do damage in the two hole versus the third uh, three hole. Dobbs tired auto centers defense for the St. Louis Cardinals with Holiday in left, Grichik in center, and Steven Piscotti is in right. Carpenter, Diaz, Jerko, and Moss on the infield. And Yadier Molina behind the plate. And again, that's presented by Dobbs. David Fries will turn 33 later this month. He was two for four the first game of this series, but a lot of people talking about his defense. Yeah, he made two spectacular plays. Among the starters of the Cardinals, it was Michael Walker who saw the most activity against him on the base pass in terms of stolen bases from a year ago and attempts. And as you mentioned, Al, he's coming off his last start in spring training. He looked terrific that day. Of course, Kutchin, because he's healthy, he's running better. Expect him to steal many more than the seven he had a year ago when he had a knee problem. But, you know, Walk is a good athlete, but when you see somebody that's six foot six and the way he arches back in his delivery, he's going to be slow to the plate, so base runners will try and take advantage of him. No balls, two strikes. One thing we saw from David Freeze in St. Louis, heroics at times, very good production during that All Star campaign of 2012, but he will hit into his fair share of double plays. That's what Walker would love right here. Yeah. 
On the outside corner, doesn't get the call. When you think about Michael Walker Allen watching him in spring and at the tail end of last year, you know, it all depends on fastball command. Everything goes off that fastball. Well, most definitely. I think the problems he had late in the season and in Chicago was just the fact that he, he just wore himself out. The innings did pile up on him. In the dirt, locked very nicely by Yadier Molina. When we were in spring training, there was a picture of him in the paper of him in, you know, in this windup of delivering a pitch. And I showed it to him and asked him if he thought he was leaning too far backwards. You know, particularly when he's in the windup, he really arches that back and and delivers the ball in a downward angle. But it looked like he dropped his elbow. He didn't think so. But when he was throwing so well at the end of 13, everything he threw was down below the knees, whether it was his fastball, whether it was the changeup, everything was so consistent. When he got hurt later in the season, everything was up. The 2-2. Two -two. Yeah. And Freeze, a swing and a miss and a strikeout, first of 2016, first of many for Michael Walker as we get a look at the Hyundai pitch arsenal for big number 52. Remember when he came to the big leagues with his two pitch pitcher, fastball and a great changeup. He's worked hard on his curveball, but the pitch he's really working on is the cutter now. There it is right there. And getting a hitter to be a little aggressive and take advantage of expanding the zone. Here's Starling Marte made his fourth straight opening day start in left field. That's it out of play. Last to do that was Jason Bay of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Yesterday was a workout day for the Cardinals. It was not mandatory. Michael Walker was here at the ballpark, had the chance to visit with him in the clubhouse, and he said the slider was a pitch that he would use at Texas A&M. But now it's the cutter, and he feels very confident with the curveball, which we saw in spring training. He feels now he can throw that curveball at any point in the count. And yet sometimes I think he worries more about those instead of his excellent changeup. You know, those pitches at the expense of the changeup. The catch and your runner at first base, the 0-1 pitch. There's a cutter again, but. You know, you just have to go out there and see every given night what's working for you. You know, and what working for you early in a game may not, it may betray you later on, but one of those other pitches, all of a sudden you wear down, maybe you stay on top of the pitch, and that's your out pitch later in the game. One ball, one strike with two outs and a runner at first. Michael said that the main thing though that he was concentrating on in that final start of spring training repeatable delivery mechanics he said I really got out of whack at the end of last year felt better towards the tail end of spring training getting on top of his pitches there's the curveball and does not get the call. Two outs got a base runner there guy can run. I'm not really that concerned about the base runner because I got two outs. If I get the hitter out, it doesn't matter what the country does. Here's a 2 1 pitch. The fly ball out to deep right field. Going back, Piscotti leaps and he's got it up against that chain link fence. So Marte gave it a ride. And Piscotti puts it away for the third and final out of the bottom of the first. We played one inning, the Steel City. Cards and Pirates on Fox Sports Midwest, and there's no score.
St. Louis Cardinals baseball is brought to you by Ford, the official cars and trucks of the St. Louis Cardinals. And by Steel Outdoor Power Equipment. Quality, reliability, and value. Find a servicing steel dealer at steeldealers.com or search S-T-I-H-L. Roberto Clemente statue as you make your way from downtown across the Clemente Bridge here to PNC Park. As Randall Grichik takes a ball outside. Grichik was one for four on Sunday with three strikeouts. Well, we're going to see some strikeouts from him, but hopefully a lot of production. High fly ball lifted into right field. Gregory Polanco makes the catch. This cold night here in Pittsburgh. So good start for Jonathan Neese, the 29 year old from Lima, Ohio, last year 9 and 10 with the New York Mets. I think the Steeler fans would be very accustomed to cold weather here. They say the football stadium, which is right on the point to the rivers, the three rivers, they said the wind just goes right through there. But it is going to be cold tonight. That's what we expect this early in the season. There's snow all over the place, all over the city today, including the outfield. Infield covered up, obviously, overnight, but the outfield was full of snow, and they were still taking some of that snow away around 4:30, 4:45 today. Molina was two for three in Game One with a run scored and a walk. She made a club record 12th straight opening day start at catcher. Fights this off. On the outfield grass, Jordy Mercer makes the catch. MLB.TV Premium, the number one live streaming sports service, delivers everything you've come to expect and more. Watch every out of market game live in high definition on over 400 supported devices. That includes a free subscription to At Bat Premium. Visit MLB.TV for details. Brandon Moss appeared as a pinch hitter on Sunday, struck out, and takes a ball in. The shift being used on Moss, off speed pitch, way out in front. He evens it up in one ball and one strike. He had the option of playing Moss at first base or left field and bringing Holiday back into first. But I think we all like the idea of having Holiday play at first base and had Tommy Pham out there in left field, Richard in center, Piscotti in the right. Much better defensive, but then the injury to, to Pham kind of threw that out of whack for maybe as long as a month. Talk to Matt Adams, who was thrust into play against Liriano on a cold day. Grab your bat, and now you got to face one of the toughest lefties in the game. And he said he was nasty as Moss hits this one out to deep left center field on the move is Marte back 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 and it's a ground rule double for the Cardinals. Moss gave it a ride the opposite way. First extra base hit for the Cardinals. And Moss who played here in Pittsburgh they know about his power but good to see him take that one out to left center the deepest part of the park. Any other spot that would have been a home run. Good to see you pitch out of way, take it out in the left center. You see out there is the deepest part. Any other part of the park, that's a home run. Let's we'll see if the Cardinals can't score first. Grew up in Morgantown, West Virginia. Not too far away here from the city of Pittsburgh. A mountaineer, Jed Jerko, and also grew up a big Pirates fan. We talked about it, very good numbers against Nice. Five for nine, a pair of doubles. He made the opening day start at shortstop. Went 0 for 3 with a walk. You can see where, not saying it's going to be a platoon situation, but Jerko has good numbers when facing left handed pitching. And then you turn around and Wong has the better right handed numbers against a right handed pitcher. Hit out of play. One ball, two strikes. Jerko last year against lefties hit 282, 235 against the righties. With 
Jay's departure, part of the trade for Jerko, that marked the end of the Memphis Mafia. You may remember that. John Jay and David Freeze, Alan Craig, Tony Cruz, and Daniel Descalso. Popped up into shallow right. Coming on, Gregory Polanco, Cardinal Strand, a runner. And that's Brandon Moss as he picks up the first extra base hit of the season for St. Louis. Yeah. <laughs> Al was just talking about Colton Wong and the with more on that and his situation, let's turn it over to Jim Hayes. Jimmy. Yeah, Colton not starting today, had a rough one, and the opener struck out with the bases loaded, popped up with the bases loaded. Wong told me he thinks the biggest difference with him this year is putting the bad stuff behind him quickly. Colton admittedly tended to wear it in years past. He said he's been working with John Mabry, not just on hitting, but mental approach. Wong says no more overreacting to a bad play or bad at bat. He told me a quote from Miguel Cabrera stuck with him. He said Cabrera said he laughs when he sees a guy slam down his helmet in disgust because he knows that guy is panicking. Wong says he doesn't want to be that guy. Danny's got the new contract and Colton says he knows the organization is behind him. He's just got to go out and play and not overthink it. And Jim uh, Mike Matheny was asked about Colton Wong and that new contract and the fact that he was not in the lineup today. Well obviously they're going to base their lineup on. Uh, getting some offense going and, and based on the matchups they believe in Colton Wong they want to get him going but there are going to be times where Colton Wong will not be at second base it will be Jed Jerko and Colton says he understands that and he just wants to go out and play. All right Jimmy thanks this is Francisco Cervelli who was two for three in the opening game with a triple. Yeah, and that's why I think communication is so important with Mike Matheny and something that he does quite well is you go out and explain days like this as to why Colton Wong is not in the lineup and go tell Jerko that okay you know look at the gave five year contract to Wong he's the man but there are going to be times when you're going to be out there and I'll move you from shortstop at times like you started Sunday maybe even a spell of Carpenter. Two two is lined into right field for a base hit. The second hit for the Pirates tonight. Both have gone to right field the Krispy Kreme dozen deal. If your St. Louis Cardinals get nine hits tonight, you're invited into Krispy Kreme tomorrow. Receive a dozen of their original glazed donuts for only $3.99. Stop by one of the four St. Louis area Krispy Kreme locations or the locations in Bloomington or Springfield, Illinois, for this sensational deal. Gregory Polanco just received a five year extension with two club options that could run through 2023. So they have wrapped up. A lot of their good young talent. Marte, McCutcheon, Harrison, Gung, Liriano, Jaso, Stewart, all are under long term deals. And Polanco slices that foul and out of play. 
I've said it a number of times. It's hard for me to watch Polanco and not think about Oscar Tavares. I, I was doing that today, watching batting practice with Polanco, and that's exactly what came to mind. Remember, they were both in the minor leagues. They were both compared to, as two very talented prospects, and they were going to make an impact. Out to deep right field. This ball is off the wall. Gets away from Piscotti. Cervelli to third. Polanco to third. Cervelli will score. One nothing Pittsburgh. Now Polanco is six for twelve against Waka before this one. Just a rocket right off there. And I think Piscotti got too close to the wall because of you know the rain yesterday. The bad weather, they did not hit on the field, so your outfielders didn't have the time to really find out what you have to do with a ball hit up on that wall and how it's going to carry them out there. No infielders went out. A part of it might be, too, the chain link fence, and a lot of times we've seen a ball that goes off that fence, it's dead and just drops. Yeah, and so I'm, I'm thinking exactly what you're saying, but it must have hit one of those. You know the boards right behind it to get the carom off the fence like it did. Here's Harrison who is 0 for 6 in his career against Walker. So let's take a look here. See it hits off the board there yep. and that's why Piscotti went up there thinking it's going to hit the chain link link fence it would drop straight down. But there's a chain link fence and then you saw part of the scoreboard behind it. We got the hard carom off. The 4 1 win, game one of the series. Harrison did have an RBI. Went 0 for 2. Jordy Mercer, the eighth place hitter, is on deck. That's the second ball that Polanco has hit against the Cardinals off that wall and right, and it has jumped off his bat. Get your attention. Sure does. You know, Polanco with that six foot five frame, and the ball just jumps off and gets those arms extended. He's going to grow into that body at some time and really be a power hitter on top. Of they think he's going to be. I think in my mind he's already a future star. Here's a one two. Ground ball that's hit to short. Cardinals are playing the defense back and it's picked by Brandon Moss as the run does score to make it two to nothing. The Pirates have run into some tough pitching when it comes to postseason play. Game five. Of that five game series in 2013, Wainwright went the distance, one earned run. And then the wild card, unkind, faced Madison Bumgarner, then Jake Arietta, two of the hottest pitchers in the postseason the last couple of years. And they were knocked out after just a one game playoff. After 20 years of losing a North American all sports uh, distinction, a record that you don't want to have. That's what the Pirates had, but they've been in the postseason three straight years. But then they run into that tough pitching. 98 wins last year. Franchise's highest mark since 1909. But still have not won the division since 1992, and that's back to Waka. What do you think about elimination games? And it's hard not to think about from a Cardinals perspective. Michael Walker, game four, crowd was going crazy, and Michael Walker said he talked to Chris Carpenter, who calmed him down before this start, and he was done. Walker, NLDS game four, pitched into the eighth, then twice matched up with Clayton Kershaw in the championship series and became the youngest NLCS MVP since Steve Avery of the Braves in 91. Avery was 21, Walker 22 at the time. And the first rookie to win a postseason MVP since LeBron Hernandez in the 1997 World Series with the Marlins. Dan, if I'm not mistaken, you know, that was the year the Pirates did win the one game playoff against Cincinnati and Cueto. And Cueto just was freaked out by the noise generated by the Pirate fans. And that's why what Walker did was so impressive. And maybe it was a sign of things to come. Remember, 
the Cardinals at the end of that regular season they were still unsure as to whether or not he'd even be on the postseason roster they're being very cautious with his innings and then he almost threw a no hitter against Washington and they said well I think we're going to add him yeah, and I think a two by design Remember, they had walk in the minor leagues monitoring his innings and the plan was Shelby Miller is going to get us to the postseason then walk is going to take over from there second strikeout for Michael Walker but the Pirates strike first RBI triple by Gregory Polanco RBI ground out by Harrison two nothing so we head to the third. to that young man Aledmus Diaz making his Major League debut tonight in his first ever plate appearance here in Major League Baseball talked to him before the game his mom and dad are here and so is his wife who is five and a half months pregnant they are all here made the trip from Florida and he's the first Cuban born player for the Cardinals since Eli Marrero back in the early 2000s. First pitch to Diaz is a strike. The last eight months have been very kind to Diaz. Remember, he was taken off the roster. Nobody claimed him. And then all of a sudden, went on a hitting spree. 333. Was a little bit of pop at, at double A. Got promoted to triple A. Hit well there. 380. Three home runs, 14 games. And then went to Fall League and hit four home runs there in 20 games and over 300. Said it many times. How do you not root for these great ball players that come from Cuba and what they have to deal with in their lives? And then to get to this point, as Diaz picks up the base hit into right field, first major league hit, a lead miss Diaz. Congratulations. Well, that souvenir will be on a mantle someplace. But what I'd like to there was you just saw him as a hitter. He saw him pitch outside and then guided it through the right side. Saw the hole there, and he's got a thousand batting up. Don't retire yet, though. See the ball outside there, and look at how it just guides it to the right side. And the second base from playing up the middle, and it goes on through. There's the bunt. It is down by Michael Walker. Diaz advancing to second base with the sacrifice. He's in scoring position. We had such a wonderful conversation, both of us, with Brian Payne in spring training. And Brian is one of the athletes that you really pull for who comes to the ballpark every day happy to be here and so grateful for what he has and it does give you a little insight into what these players from Cuba have dealt with in their lives just to get to this point just to be able to play baseball here in the United States. Some uh, horrific stories of how they escaped how they get to another country 
have residency so they can establish residency in another country and then go through the free agent process being claimed by a team. Carpenter looks at a strike. He had an eight pitch first at bat to start the game. A lot of times you'll hear a manager or somebody talk about a good at bat and you don't get a hit on the case he strikes out. But I know that's one of the things that Glenn Hurdle believes that if you have eight pitches, you see eight pitches, it's been a good at bat. That's it out of play. One ball, two strikes. I've never heard that before. I heard it last year about eight pitches. Carpenter, a 331 average the last three years, fifth best in the major leagues with runners in scoring position. Number one on that list, if you're wondering, his teammate Matt Holliday at 379. Diaz is running and it's hit out of play. He had a great jump. Yeah, good jump. He was moving as pitcher made the play home and just had it timed perfectly. He got freeze the third baseman playing well off the line. So why not take it if you get that kind of a jump? And you try to throw to a third baseman running towards the bag, you got a good chance of that ball going into the outfield and the Cardinals could tie the game. But see freeze way off the line. And a one two pitch to Carpenter. Round ball pulled foul. And Matt broke his bat. Or did he? That's Jaso down at first, who is accustomed to playing either catcher or being a DH when he was with Tampa Bay. He comes over to Pittsburgh, and this is a guy that they looked at for on base percentage, and he's trying to learn a new position. He only had five innings at first base prior to. Coming to the Pirates. Here's a one-two. And you're right. They they picked him up because it's on base percentage. And but they had been looking at him for a couple of years and always had the thought in the back of their minds that he could be a first baseman. And of course Carpenter tested him with the first pitch of the game on Sunday. The two-two. Nice last year worked out of the bullpen in the playoffs and the World Series. Now back in the rotation working with Ray Searge and a chance here with the Pirates and he also is signed long term. That contract comes with him from New York. And Carpenter draws the walk. His second walk this year. And runners at first and second for Steven Piscotti. First walk issued from the left hander. And we talked about the two hole for the Pirates. They got McCutcheon in there. Expect him to do a lot of damage. The Cardinals got Piscotti. Slow start for Piscotti, but we all know that came up last year and minor league player of the year for the Cardinals, hit 305, and then had three home runs in four games in the postseason against the Cubs. First pitch to him is a base hit out to left field. They'll hold up the runner now, bring him on in. Bobbled by Marte, the gold lover. Runners advance everywhere, the Cardinals get on the board. Initially, Chris Maloney would hold up Aledmus Diaz because of the 16 outfield assist that Marte had a year ago. He bobbled it, and the runners all advance. Not only all those assists, but he only made one error last year in almost 200 chances. So how rare is this? Misconnects. He's got a tremendous throwing arm, so they couldn't afford to send Diaz, hold him up, but they see the air. That's why a third base coach comes way down the line. Carpenter's got the play in front of him, so he could see. He looked over here, saw Diaz going home, so that's where he knew he could come to third. Here's Holiday, and that is hit towards the middle, gloved by Harrison, low throw, picked by Jason Run does score. That's Matt Carpenter. And it's a brand new game. We're tied at 2 2. Now, even though it's cold, you see a little life in that dugout. That air by Marte, how rare that was, and it kind of allowed it. You know, Holiday's going to, hasn't had a lot of success against Nice. He's a low ball hitter, but he got the run in with that ground ball out. Runner at third is. Is Scotty. And here is Randall Gritchick. Pitch taken inside. 
Richie fly to right first time up he's 0 for 1. Richick pops it up and it's out of play. Found it interesting what Mike Matheny talked about before the game. He said on a cold night, you forget how hard it is to grip the baseball. And we talked about the snow in the outfield. You wonder if that played a factor as well with the ball skipping a little bit. It's a wet surface talking to the players before the game. Here's a 1-1. Most comfortable people are the pitcher, the catcher, and the umpire. Most movement, and they stay warm. The 2 1 pulled foul. Good cut by Randall Gritchick. Big things expected from Randall this year. 24 year old, the 24th overall pick back in 2009. Richard strikes out. Third strikeout for Nice. Some trouble tonight defensively in the outfield. Biscotti, that drive in right. Marte and a ball that skipped. Allowed a run to score. And another one to come in later. 2-2. Two -two. the Pirates and it's 2 2 power stats brought to you by Kubota since 1988 the starters ERA below three the Cardinals 2.99 half run better than all but two teams in the major leagues credible run by the Cardinals pitching staff a year ago question would be can it stay that way as Jaso looks at a strike well, what the Starting pitchers did so well was they kept the ERA under three. They didn't allow, you know, a lot of base hits, and they got very stingy with runners in scoring position. They were historic in that area. 210 average with runners in scoring position. Jason with a base hit. Inside the right field line is Piscotti. Wheels and fires a strike back into the infield. Jaso is one for two. His on base percentage in his career is 361. He's reached base 38% of the time, so this is why they like him. You see that weird stance with the foot back, and then he brings it forward to get into a hitting position. Yeah, 361 career on base percentage, 380 last season. And they can't make reference to money ball and Scott or, or Hattiesburg, the guy that they 
kind of centered that around the on base percentage and he came through in the clutch. Here's McCutcheon who singled on a 3 2 pitch to right field back in the first inning. I thought that movie was entertaining, but I didn't like the way it made Art Howe or a lot of the old time scouts look. John Mabry was mentioned in that movie. As a matter of fact, they yeah. asked him if he wanted to be a part of it, and he said no. Here's a 1 0 pitch. McCutcheon pops it up to the right side. Boss will give it a look, and it's to the seats, out of play. Cardinal staff ERA 2.94, the lowest in the major league since the 88 Mets. Lowest in franchise history since 1969. Gibby was 20 and 13 that year. Carlton was still on the team then. 2.17 ERA at 17 wins that season. Nelson Bryles was a 15 game winner. Now things have changed. They won 87 games that year and finished in fourth place. 88 Mets had David Cohn and Dwight Gooden, Ron Darling, Bobby Ojeda, Sid Fernandez. Had two divisions back then. East and the West. Here's a one two pitch to McCutcheon. Just missed on the outside corner. McCutcheon swung at that high fastball earlier in the count, but he could, he'll do that if Rocca could go down, 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 and then he could surprise you with that pitch eye level and get a lot of strikeouts or pop ups with it. Two and two the count. Nobody out. Pulled foul. McCutcheon, a fabulous player. Last year hit 292. Finished in the top five of the MVP balloting, won that award back in 2013. Yeah, in the last five years, he's won one and been in the top five all seasons in the MVP balloting. And I think he's healthy and I think he'll be a contender for it again. The 2 2 from Michael Waka. Ripped into left center field. That ball is down and in the gap. Cut off by Holiday. Jaso the third. He'll be waved in. Pirates back on top three, two. Well, whatever Michael Walker is doing with McCutcheon, do something different. He is now 10 for 20. Excuse me. Look at that. 10 for 18. And the pitch up. This time he was looking for it. Holiday goes over and tries to cut it off and hits back foot, but they didn't change any of the scoring. Ball up there, look at Yachty's wanted that pitch down and away, and it glove go up over the middle. Lucky stayed in the ballpark. Here's David Freeze. Struck out back in the first. Walker struck out two. Michael Walker, the 19th overall pick out of Texas A&M in 2012. And in this great run of success, the Cardinals have had five straight postseason appearances. Nearly 60% of the players have been homegrown and many college drafts. Base hit into right. McCutcheon will be right again. The throw by Piscotti is in time. Oh, my. A bullet from right field from Stephen Piscotti to get one of the fastest runners in the National League. I think we're going to get our first review. But nice going, Piscotti. You always worry about that first throw these outfielders have on such a cold night. Been out there for a couple of innings. Very important to make those tosses. You can see he's got his hand in his pocket trying to keep some feeling in the fingertips. But country, remember, he runs well, too. He's coming home. He's not thinking anything about it, not taking anything granted. He did look. You got to give him a lane. He's out. Gets him on the arm. Yeah. What a quick tag there by Molina. Hey, that lead leg was up in the air, and I think he got him on the arm before his leg touched home plate. They were ready. Clint Hurdle was ready to uh, to challenge it, but they saw dip, they saw what we just saw. Nice goal, Stephen Piscotti. 
I realize Jason Hayward is a tremendous defender. There's no taking that away from him. But what our fans I don't think have seen is what we just saw there on a regular basis which is a terrific arm from Steven Piscotty at one point in the minor leagues ranked as the top outfield arm and this is why this is a bullet to the plate. Remember he signed as a third baseman out of Stanford and then he was converted to the outfield and immediately had that best outfield arm in the Cardinal system. So Starling Marte. It's six hits allowed already by Michael Walker. Kind of seeing the same thing that we saw in spring training. We had hoped that last out he kind of rectified it, but you know, all pitchers don't throw as much as they used to in spring training. The 2 1 and a double play ball. Diaz, Jerko, double play. 6 4 3 on the double play off the bat of Marte. Strong throw by Biscotti. 3 2 as we head to the fourth. Come to Pittsburgh, I think about one of the first games we ever saw Yadier Bolina play. And remember this. This is a base hit into right, the throw by Larry Walker and Ty Wigington barreling down and taking out the young catcher. Well, that rule has certainly changed in, ter in terms of what you can do at the plate as a runner and also as a catcher. You see the throw very strong from Larry Walker, but it pulls him up the third baseline. And he did a terrific job and won over a lot of his teammates by holding on to that ball. It was just a couple of years ago, Josh Harrison then yeah. did the same thing to Molina, and then he had to go through the concussion protocol and held out a couple of games. Well, we all know that Mike Matheny was a Fox analyst during our pre and post game shows when Buster Posey got hurt. And Mike was very emphatic at that time that Posey got hurt because of bad technique and I reminded him this winter we were at a banquet and you know because now this new rule he's been very much a part of it and trying to of how to protect the catchers and I remind him that he was against the rule change as an analyst he goes I have a little different perspective when I'm the manager of the St. Louis Cardinals and one of my pivotal players is Yadier Molina that'll change your mind quickly Molina grounds out and he's over for two. So the throw, and you see where he's positioned. He has given the runner, in this case, McCutcheon a lane. I see, there it is. You've got to give him that lane, but actually, it's McCutcheon the way he slid. He made himself out. He, his lead leg was way up in the air. 
that would have touched home plate ahead of the tag. His back leg, which was going to come across home plate, was tucked, and so he tagged him up on the shoulder and got it out. Now Boss is hit by the pitch. Molina, by the way, is one start, two games shy of passing Ted Simmons in both categories, nearly 1,500 games in both those categories. All kind of took off, came back up and in, hit by a pitch. Can't feel good on a cold night like this, but you're happy to be on base. Jerko fly to shallow right, first time up. The Ledmus Diaz, who singled in his major league debut. Back in the third, he's on deck. One thing about Jerko is he hits left handers very well, but historically he's been very, very poor coming out of the gate. Month of April, well under 200. Jerko with a fly ball hit down the left field line. Will it carry? Gone! Jet Jerko! First Cardinal home run. A two run shot, and the Cardinals go on top. He has averaged 16 home runs the last three years, and he gets his first as a Cardinal. Did not hit one in spring, and finally gets one here in Pittsburgh. In that shallow right field area, and boy, that'll make you happy. Nice to see the newcomer. You wanted him because of his power bat, and gets that ball down and in, just drops the bat head, hits it to a short part of the field. And the Cardinals. Add their lead. Take the lead. The let Miss Diaz. A single to right field on a two strike pitch back in the third inning. I asked Mike Matheny, I said, what has impressed you about Diaz as you get a look at Jerko there? But he said, we didn't just get a very good evaluation of him. He said, I was at his showcase when we saw him initially before we signed him. I was there. And he said he looked like Derek Jeter. He said I found out his favorite player was Derek Jeter. But he said he was really just letting it fly, taking big cuts. And we saw his arm in spring training, which really caught my eye. And I knew finally he's healthy, and maybe we're finally going to see the player that we expected when we brought him to St. Louis. Yeah, remember they had that process of him leaving Cuba and before he before he did the showcase. It was almost what 14 months that he did not play baseball and so when he started after he signed with the Cardinals his shoulder was act, uh, acting up. So we're just starting to see him healthy for the first time. Three and one the count. Players Association MLB made a goodwill trip to Cuba this past offseason. Brian Pena was part of that John Jay. Clayton Kershaw. Yasiel Puig, Jose Abreu. Brian Pena talked about how emotional it was for him to see family and friends, and Diaz, the 24th Cuban born player to play in the big leagues this year. And saying before the game, he hopes that that list just keeps on getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Remember, we saw Rene Arocha. He's the first one that played with guys like Diego Segui or Orlando Pena. Tony Perez. What a nice man he is. On the inside corner, strikeout of Diaz. That's four tonight for Nice. You mentioned the Cardinals struck out 14 times in game one. And we know that the strikeout is a part of the game today, but to put it in perspective how things have changed, the 1967 and the 1982 Cardinals had only seven games with a total of 10 or more strikeouts. I mean, it's just prevalent now in today's game as Waka hits a ground ball to Jordy Mercer. The Cardinals get their first home run of the season. Off the bat of Jed Jerko, and with that, the Cardinals have their first lead, 4-3.
Yellowwood bringing the lumber. Jed Jerko, two run homer, and the Cardinals have a 4 3 lead. Home half of the fourth rolls in as Michael Walker finishes up his warm up tosses. I was talking earlier, Al, about the Cardinals and drafting college players. Jerko, a former college player, not drafted by the Cardinals. Michael Walker was. And the Cards' history has been long and rich with their farm system. 1924, it was Branch Rickey who bought controlling interest in the Houston Buffaloes. And that was baseball's first affiliated minor league team. And by 1940, he had built a 32-team farm system with control of over 600 players. He revolutionized the game. Absolutely did. Just think about how the Cardinals have done it, this great run that they're in. And it's player development, John Bozalock and his crew. Aaron Adam in the 60s. Baseball did not have the respect it has today with the college programs. And they always said, well, you've got to sign out of high school. You've got to sign out of high school so we can teach you how to play the game right. Francisco Cervelli to Diaz, one away. And now I think every organization, sure, they'll sign some some high school kids of the Phenoms, but they almost will prefer you to have the college player to have that attrition on, on getting hurt, but just to learn how to you know, be mature and how to handle the life of the baseball player. There's Gregory Polanco. Two runs scored in game one. Last year, the Pirates were 40 games above 500 when he scored a run. Think about that. 40 above 500 when he scored a run. The Cardinals had the best start of any National League club last year in April. And a hard hit ball, and it is foul off the bat of Polanco. Must go for that ball. And they came up empty, but not going off his glove. Polanco just hit a couple rockets. And you see, he did, didn't touch it. Yeah, Polanco is the youngest player in the roster for the Pirates at the age of 24. We forget Michael Waka is only 24 years of age. And here's an 0 1 pitch to Polanco. Only Jordano Ventura has one more win than Waka for any pitcher in the major leagues currently 24 or younger. Ventura with 27, Waka 26, and only Ventura and Jose Fernandez have more strikeouts. And now with two strikes, Cardinals put on the shift for Gregory Polanco. It's pretty impressive. The early resume of his career, Michael Waka. Molina wants to bounce it and gets it there. Well, it was also so impressive last year about the Cardinal pitching staff was the offense did not score many runs. I had four runs per game. So how many games were they always under the gun in one or two run game where there was no margin for error for the starters and relievers. Pitch up in the zone and a strikeout of Gregory Polanco number three tonight. Friday, April 15th, 30,000 fans ages 16 and older take home their very own replica Bush Stadium 3 with working lights. This one of a kind stadium replica is presented by Amron, Missouri. So visit cardinals.com slash promotions to purchase April 15th Cardinals tickets against the Reds. We should mention there are opening day tickets still available for Monday. Fly ball that Carries foul and out of play. Changing the eye level, huh, Al? Exactly. That's what we talked about. You've got to get the ball down. Keep the, your off speed pitches down and everything like that. But then when you have two strikes, you can go up the ladder. Good pitch up and away. But that's where you get guys to chase if they're seeing everything down in the zone. And Walker with that six foot six frame, and he releases the ball so high over his head, it can only go in a downward plane. Pitch at the knees to Harrison. See, I think now he's feeling a little bit now. I like that ability to repeat his delivery right now. Seems like he's a lot more in command. 
More aggressive on the mound. Can bounce this one. One, two, got him to reach, and it's tapped foul. More strikes you throw like that, you're going to get people. You know, you, an off balance swing by Harris. And then later on the count, whether you want to go up in the zone, you can get him maybe to chase. Cutter. On one and two. Bounced in the dirt again. And Molina kept it in front. Harrison no longer the super utility guy. The 2 2. Molina sets up outside and it's driven down the right field line. Piscotti is back near the wall and it's a foul ball. to get to that wall as quickly as this guy did he had to be shading him in the right field ball clearly foul but there's Piscotti right in the corner and he is way into the right field corner with the big gaps in right and left center Nobody on and a 2 2 pitch to Harrison. Good battle here. One thing that stands out in the starts for Michael Walker from a year ago, the Cardinals very cautious with him, did not go deep into games, so do keep an eye on the pitch count. This will be number 69 upcoming. And Dan, that's why I worked so much on the cutter, thinking that that pitch would get him a lot of outs, early outs. 2 2 and a base hit out to left. We're going away. Now he tried to get something inside and he just turned on. A look at our Chevy Fox tracks as Harrison wins this battle with Michael Waka. So Yachty set up inside and the ball right down and in, but a lot of these hitters today just dropped that bat head and he single out to the outfield. Already seven hits allowed by Walker. Mercer grounded out back to Michael Walker first time up. The strike. Get ahead curveball. First half Michael Walker 10 and three a year ago. The final month, 18 walks in 24 innings as things unraveled a bit for him. Check on Harrison, and he's back in safely. Yeah, and I think that was just the fact that, you know, he kind of reached his, his limit. You know, he pitched a lot in 2013, 2014, and missed a couple months. And then last year, coming out, he just kind of wore out. Pitched the innings caught up, caught up to him. No balls, two strikes. At least he was healthy that last month, but I think the same thing was happening to Martinez. But with a little shoulder injury, they shut him down. Well, Walker kept on trying to pitch through it. Both of them will be strong this year for all the pitching they did a year ago. Here's the 0 2 from Michael Walker on its way. Popped up to the right side, and that'll find the seats out of play. Oh, and two, yeah, waste to pitch. We go right after him. Eight place hitter, you got the pitcher on deck. Hey, hey. On the first. Nick Leva, the first base coach, long time now here in Pittsburgh after a number of years in St. Louis. Yeah. It's been manager, big league level coach. Now the throw to first, maybe. Not running in a pitch out. One and two. Oh, 
Well, we know how aggressive that the Pirates like to be there, but you do have Yachty or Bellina behind the plate, and that stops a lot of running games. Eighth place hitter with an 0 2 count. Change up. Bounced in the dirt. Kept in front by Molina, who has done that time and again the first two days of this series. Well, you're expecting the ball down, but you don't want it that far down. Got it with a good technique, blocks it, ready to gut out a runner trying to advance. Cutter. The 2-2. Two -two. Reaches for it. It is a fair ball. Into right. The Scotty over to cut it off and back into the infield. Mercer just reached out for it. Nice piece of hitting. Base hit. Back to back singles and it brings in the pitcher Jonathan Deese. Absolutely. Good pitch here but a better piece of hitting. Look at right off the ankles. Takes that pitch. Not supposed to be able to hit that ball like that. Mm. So it does extend the inning. The pitcher spot will come up here. He's runners at the corners. Two outs, so Walker. Got it gonna come and remind him. Infield all coming in. Slowing down a little bit. You go right after him. You want this victory, you have to get this man out. Two outs, two on, 4-3 St. Louis. Pitch count up to 75 for Michael Waka. Cardinals will have the top of the lineup due up in the top of the fifth. He struck out his first time. Waka has struck out three. He's now given up eight base hits. Francisco Liriano drove in the first run of the baseball season on Sunday. Last to do that, last pitcher was Don Gullet, 1973. Don Gullet, boy, you talk about an outstanding pitcher. Had a lot of injuries, but really was a winner. And because of those injuries, that career ended way too soon. Side, one ball, two strikes. The one two, Nice puts it in play, backhanded by Moss to Waka for the out. The Pirates strand two on a chilly night here in Pittsburgh. Some Cardinal fans here tonight. It's 4 3.
Before it's all said and done, Big Poppy could be the all-time Boston Red Sox leader in home runs as it's opening week 2016. Cardinals did not hold BP outside in this chilly night. They stretched inside, inside the clubhouse, took BP in the cages. Mentioned the other day, game time temperature was 39. Nearly the coldest opener for the Pittsburgh Pirates. 37 is the coldest it's ever been for an opener. It's very chilly here tonight. And unfortunately, the Cardinals lose Tommy Pham, who's out with a oblique injury. Part of that due to the cold weather, couldn't get loose. As Carpenter lifts a fly ball out to left, Marte in foul territory runs out of room. Brian Pena had surgery today, had a loose body taken out of the knee, so he's going to miss, looks like close to a month. Pham could be close to a month. Pena, they said, on his surgery, didn't find anything worse than just cleaning it up. And Tejada could be the first one back. But it opens up opportunities, and there's a lead Miss Diaz who has played well here tonight. Again, it's, like, it's not only the time they're going to be on the disabled list, but then the time they're going to lose and have to restart spring training again. It's not like it was midseason. 0-2 pitch, and Carpenter out in front and strikes out. Well, Jim, how do these guys get loose? Maybe between starts, Jim Hayes, how do they make sure they're ready to go? Well, Cardinals starting pitchers are always busy, Dan, doing something. It could be weight training to strengthen the legs. Adam Wainwright took it to a whole new level this afternoon, pulling a sled outside the visitors' clubhouse with 300 pounds of weights plus strength and conditioning coach Pete Prinzi, total weight 550 pounds. Now, Wainwright said he saw Carlos Martinez pulling that sled with just the weights. So, Wayno added Princey just so he could <laughs> claim victory. That's how competitive these guys are. There's a line drive and a base hit into right center field, all the way to the wall. Piscotti to second, Steven Piscotti on his way to third, and he is in there with a one out triple. Polanco didn't take a very good route to that baseball. It gets by him, and with that, a one out triple and a golden opportunity here for St. Louis. The second hit of the night for the Cardinal right fielder. That's right. He's got a single and RBI. Now it adds a triple to it. There's that bad route to try and get the ball. Scotty you know, is known as a line drive hitter. I think we're going to see the home runs, the power come later on as he matures more. But he's a really a nice looking young ball player. Cardinals are putting a lot of stock in he and Gritchick. Here's Holiday who has an RBI tonight. Looks at a pitch down and in. Infield is drawn in for the Pirates. Holiday has never really hit Nice very well, but remember he's a low ball hitter. He can power. Holiday hits it to short. Mercer backhands. Only play to go to first. Flips it there, and it's wide. Holiday on his way to second base as Jaso. Chases it down, and with that, it's a 5-3 St. Louis lead. Mercer thought about going to the plate, hesitated, flipped it to first, and with that, the Pirates, some sloppy defense here in game two of the series. Exactly right. First of all, I was going to say, because he's a low ball hitter, he could probably hit a ground ball with infield in. He may find a hole. So he gets the RBI, but then Mercer, you know, because he frustrated, he didn't get the out at first base, he kind of lobbed the ball over there. Jaso is not a first baseman. He did not come off the bag. He tried to make the stretch. It was beyond his reach and allowing Holiday to get to second. Randall Gritchick 0 for 2 with a strikeout and also fly out to right. So it should be a base hit. Uh, RBI and then takes third on the or second on the air by the shortstop. It's ruled just a straight air on the shortstop, so oh, no kidding. base hit for Holiday. Oh, that's terrible. Got to protect my man. <laughs> Richick is swinging a miss, and he strikes out. Off to a tough start in the first couple of games of this 2016 season. The 
Brings in Molina. He's over two. The Cardinals with a lead of five to three. I just wonder if Nice is talking about either their approach with Molina. That's one way to look at it. Or first base is open. Do we want to deal with a lefty lefty matchup and Brandon Moss. But you might be asking for trouble. Well, you know what. You could get anybody out and make good pitches. But the odds may be in favor. You know you're a left handed pitcher. You have more success against a left handed batter. But if you make a bad pitch anybody can hurt you. And Moss did that earlier too. Went right after Yachty right there. Now the 0 for 2. Popped out to short, grounded out to short. Holiday, your runner at second base. Pitch number 80 upcoming. Molina hits it out of play. Now it's where you may make a lot of mistakes. And after him, you got to head 0 2. And you're saying, okay, I'll waste this pitch, then I'm going to get him out with the next one. And you don't make a good effort on this one, and he, he beats you. Good swing. Cardinals fell behind in this game, two nothing after two, tied it up in the third, fell behind three two, and now have scored three unanswered. The next two, Yachty out in front, he strikes out and tagged out by Francisco Cervelli. Cardinals add to their lead. It's 5-3. Angel David Freeze and baseball is back in FS1 will have its first national telecast of the season Thursday Prince Fielder and the Rangers take on Mike Trout and the Angels. It's all on America's home for baseball all season long FS1 or watch it live on Fox Sports Go. It is amazing at this level you commit an error or in this case two, and the damage that can be done. It's led to two runs. Cardinals have a two run lead. How about Jaso is the eighth different first baseman they've had in the last eight years at, on opening day. Pedro Alvarez was due to make close to $10 million. They said no thanks. Well, he, remember, he couldn't throw anymore, so they had to move him from third to first. And a ground ball slowly hit to the right side. Taken there by Boss. Over to Waka for the out. Very important inning for Waka to go out there and get some quick outs. Maybe extend his night into the sixth inning. But need to qualify this one for the win. More importantly, he wants to 
seems to be a, a quick and efficient inning. McCutcheon with two more hits against Walker tonight is now 10 for 18 in his career. Singled on a 3 2 pitch to right back in the first. And doubled, picked up an RBI to left center back in the third. Just talking with Michael Walker, and we had Jim show us what Wainwright was doing in terms of some of the exercises between starts. Michael Walker every day, shoulder exercises because of. The issues he's had. Hanging breaking ball and McCutcheon is three for three. Could be dumbbells, stretching, various shoulder exercises, but the shoulder, he told me, is as strong as it's ever been. His career against the Pirates, seven starts, four and one, ERA under three. And it is our BJC Healthcare Difference Maker here for game number two. 4-0 against them. So trying to get back in the winning ways. Cardinals have turned a double play tonight. That was off the bat of Starling Marte back in the third. Freeze one for two. He struck out in the first. Single to right. And then it was an outstanding throw from Piscotti to the plate to get Andrew McCutcheon. That kept a run off the board. His freeze went after that pitch up in the zone. David's so good at hitting the ball to right field. They'll turn on it if you put it inside on him and stuff that way, but you can't just live out away from him because he'll shoot it that way. The 0 1 to David Freeze. Hits it the other way. The Scotty giving chase, and it's out of play. The last six active World Series MVPs Cole Hamels with the Phillies, David Freeze with the Cardinals, Sandoval with the Giants, Ortiz against St. Louis in 13. Bumgarner was ridiculous a couple of years ago, and then Salvador Perez, the outstanding catcher. Of the Royals just a year ago, and they received their rings earlier today. Mets had to look at that too, didn't they? And they had to watch the banner go up at a long pregame celebration on Sunday. Syndergaard, he turned that around with shutout, two nothing shutout against them. last year's world champions. 2007, the Cardinals opened up against the Mets. After defeating them in the NLCS of 2006, and we'll be celebrating that team all season long with promotions and giveaways. A lot of the players from that 06 team will be back in St. Louis in the various nights for the Budweiser Bash and bobbleheads and first pitches. So great to see some of those guys we normally would not see back in town. Here's a 1 2 to David Freeze. Uh, this is the fifth year Mike Matheny's been being at the helm of the Cardinals, and he's never had an opening day at Bush Stadium. All five years, his team has opened up on the road. In this case, in a cold weather city, the 2 2. And I realize with interleague play, Unbalanced schedule. It's very tough to probably, you know, probably try to get those matchups in warm weather cities. But you had two dome teams playing each other in this first week with Tampa Bay and Toronto. Hey, to me, you got to look at Texas. You got to look at Arizona. You got to look at California down in Florida. Yeah, and then utilize the, you know, the dome stadiums. And sure. Stuff. Didn't have to have all the interleague play teams. Three-two pitch. Runner goes, and it's a base hit for Freeze. He just continues to hit so far. Two hit night for David Freeze, two for three. Looking forward to seeing the debut of Mike Leake, and that'll be tomorrow. 
Lee gets the call for the St. Louis Cardinals, the game three starter here in 2016 against Juan Nicasio. Leak was very good in spring training. Nicasio also was very good and found the strikeout. He had a game when he pitched 15 innings in, in spring training, he had 24 strikeouts. He had one game, he struck out 10 of the 14 batters he faced. So we'll see what Ray Surge has done with him as Tyler Lyons starts getting loose. Two on, Starling Marte. Not time called by Molina. He wants to visit. And Yachty has to kind of figure out where he wants to be. Uh, stern talking here or be your best friend, but he might sit there and say, look, if you want this win, you got to get through this inning. You better get some outs right now. Leak, by the way, was 11 and 10. A year ago, signed a five year contract with St. Louis. I was talking with Bob Walk, one of the broadcasters for the Pirates yesterday, and he said if he could have picked any pitcher, any starting pitcher for the Pirates, who he thought would be the best suited for them was Mike Lee. 1 0 pitch, two balls, no strikes. For that reason, he's a ground ball pitcher. Because he's been very durable to his career, he's also a very good athlete, can help himself fielding and hitting. Big ballpark two would help him out. The 2-0. -oh. So as Lions continues to throw, Michael Walker trying to get through five. Pitch count at 93. Remember, Lions a year ago pitched the clinching game for St. Louis and finished off the NL Central Division. The 3 0. And he walked it. First walk issued by Michael. And it brings in Francisco Cervelli. Eric Lilliquist has done an outstanding job since taking over for Dave Duncan. These visits now are tied. Yeah. And so you have 30 a 30 seconds. 30 seconds the time that you step out of the dugout to the mound. This week only T Mobile customers can get a free season long subscription to MLB.tv Premium. Go to T Mobile.com slash MLB to sign up now and catch every moment on America's fastest growing network, the LTE network. Bases loaded for Cervelli, who hit a grand slam against the Cardinals a year ago. So part of that conversation is settle down, take a deep breath. All you need is one ground ball, and we can turn two and get you out of this jam. One more base runner, he's probably out of the game. Especially with a lefty on deck in Polanco. Have loved what they've gotten from Cervelli. Took over for Russell Martin, came over from the Yankees in a trade for Justin Wilson. Hit nearly 300 a year ago. There's another player that potentially a free agent after this year. The grand slam may have been against Walker. Got a home run of four RBIs against him with just two hits. Cardinals looking for the double play. The 1 1. Two balls and a strike. Teams look at everything now and they say the most important pitch in baseball is the 1 1. The odds now. Go way up for the hitter with two balls and one strike. Up the middle, Diaz to his left. Bottom of it. And everybody's safe. Scores on the air by Alemis Diaz, and it's 5 4. And Diaz just trying to do a little too much. His mind is working a little quicker than his hands. He sees the ground ball up the middle. He's trying to decide do I step on the bag? Do I make the shovel pass? And it's too late. 
and walk is out of this game. Be called to the pen, and Tyler Lyons will make his season debut out of the Cardinals bullpen. We go back to the air for Diaz, and it could have been an inning ending double play, and Waka a chance to leave with a two run lead. See where right, Diaz is going to field that ball, flip the ball to Jerko, but he didn't look into his glove, drops it, and then by the time he recovers, he has no out. They get a run in, it's a Lions out of options this year, but I think he made the team either way because of his pitching. He'll be the long man and he's a pretty good situational guy too, but he can get out righties and lefties. Polanco's 0 for 7 against him. First pitch is strike. The Hyundai pitch arsenal for Tyler Lyons. His breaking pitch, that slider, is as good as anybody you'll see from the left side. That's a lot of times you know you see it today breaking balls kind of slurvy and they call it a slider but it's a good breaking pitch. Driven out to center field. Richard going back with room makes the catch. Two runners will tag up. This game is tied at five. He wants it away. It's a breaking ball, but lifted it up and over the middle of the plate. Lucky it stayed in the ballpark. But second out of the inning, but they get a run in, and the time run, potential time runs over at third. Josh Harrison, one for two with an RBI. Single to left back in the fourth. Runners at the corners, 5 5 our score. Center field, Gritchick puts it away. Lyons comes in, gets two outs, a run does score against him. That's charged to walk up. New game as we head to the six, all tied up.
30,000 fans entering with a ticket receive a poster celebrating the past 10 seasons at Bush Stadium 3. So many great moments from soccer to concerts. Courtesy of Shelter Insurance. Oh yeah, a few World Series as well. Visit cardinals.com slash promotions for tickets. Both starters are out of the game as Archimedes Caminero is our Chevy call to the pen and he has one of the biggest arms in baseball. On a regular basis he will hit triple digits and Caminero comes into the ball game after a solid year a season ago He's, he was picked up from the Miami Marlins and again Ray Searge the pitching coach of the Pirates talked about a direct delivery to the plate. That's one of the main things that he mentions with anybody he gets. Jay had parlayed that into thirty six million dollars with Toronto. They changed how his direction was to the plate that front side and the same can be said for number thirty seven Archimedes Caminero. The surge was a product of the Cardinals minor league system. First pitch to Brandon Moss taken by Jaso for the out. One pitch one away. Jonathan Nees, the starter for the Pirates tonight, five innings, five runs on five hits, struck out seven, walked one, and no home runs, uh, rather, one home run allowed. And that was to Jed Jerko. And that was career home run number 50 for Jerko. Talk about Ray Search and what he's done with some of these pitchers. I think a lot of times he's kind of stunned by the reaction. There he is, 60 years of age. But you know, the one of the things he does is he he really accentuates the positive. But he'll sit down with guys and he'll get to know every aspect about their family, you know, all everything about them, and just keeps everything positive and wins them over. And then it's not it's nothing big. Just maybe hey, do this a little bit more often. Take away that pitch. But you know, he's just a lot of times it's just watching the video and finding some little mechanical, but it's all after getting to know the player. The one one. He said he learned that from pitching with the White Sox and Don Rowe, who said always be positive. And then with a guy like Jonathan Neese, Ron Paranowski, the outstanding pitching coach for years with the Dodgers. Always told lefties work on the left side of the rubber so you can get into the righties with that cutter. This guy throws hard. That's a cutter there at 93. He's already hit 100 in this game here tonight on a chilly night at PNC. 6'4, 245, and he looks a lot bigger than that. Strikeout of Jerko. Strikeouts are mounting again tonight. First strikeout for Caminero. Nice had seven. That what you got? So eight, eight after eight struck it out 14 times on Sunday. A lead miss Diaz. Jammed a bit, slowly hit. Caminero steps off the mound and Jaso. Handles that low throw. Cardinals go in order. We are midway through six. Game two of this 2016 campaign.
We're tied up at 5-5. The Yadier Molina effect and the positive impact that he makes with wins and losses. You just can't look at those numbers and say, well, it's not that big a deal. It is huge. What he means to this club, talked about it earlier. One start, two games shy of passing Ted Simmons. All time in both categories for games and starts. Nearly 1,500 in both categories. And when he starts, this team wins. Sing Wad O oh is the new pitcher for St. Louis. He made his major league debut on Sunday in that game. One inning, a couple of strikeouts, walk two, no damage done. And he walked the first batter he faced here in the major leagues after 571 outings in Korea and Japan. A little disappointed about that. And I think we were a little bit surprised that he kind of walked that first bat because we expect him to come in throwing strikes. Which he ultimately did with a shutout in it. Jordy Mercer. Pitch at 94 from O against righties. You'll see that ball really go and move in on a right hander and away. It's got really good action. 0 and 2 the count. Molina sets up outside. It's a pitch just like that. Of course, you know, he has the ability to really spot his pitches when Yachty sets up, and a lot of times Yachty will set up almost outside the batter's box into the, in this case, the left hand side of the batter's box. He'll go all the way out there. One, two, got him to reach. The strikeout. Like Good got start it. for O. Sunday, April 17th, 30,000 fans ages 16 and older take home a replica Yadier Molina home white jersey. One of a kind jersey features a special 10th anniversary Bush Stadium three patch, similar to the one the team will wear the first home stand of the season. Get your tickets at cardinals.com slash promotions. That weekend also includes against the Reds, the Wainwright bobblehead, and Bush Stadium three giveaway. Matt Joyce, pinch hit here. Saw Joyce pinch it in game one. And the first pitch is taken down. So Cam and Arrow, one inning. Three up and three down. As the Pirates will go back to their bullpen. Cardinals bullpen last year, 2.82 ERA. Lowest for the Cardinals since 1995, third lowest in baseball overall. And the 1 1 to Joyce. The problem is the number one bullpen is the Pirates. But oh, well, he gives you another quality arm down there that Mike Matheny could count on frequently and experience of closing out games. The 2 1 pitch to Matt Joyce. Saw that in spring, too. A lot of late swings against O. And I talked to a number of the Cardinals who watched his bullpens. They think that he hides the ball as well as anybody. That's so, so big today. Being, being deceptive. Has different motions. Long hesitation there. And goodbye. Back to back strikeouts for O. Yes. Perfect location down the way. You get that first relief appearance or plate appearance out of the way, and now you relax. And O admitted that he was really nervous the other day. If, you, if you're not, there's something wrong with you. Two outs, nobody on, and Jaso fouls it away. Like I said, you know, he's the all time safe leader in Korea. The last two years pitching Japan at 80 combined saves. But he had 571 outings in Korea and Japan before he pitched Sunday in the big leagues. Wanted to take the next step, the next challenge, and here he is. And it looks like the Cardinals are going to appreciate his efforts. Here's the 0 1 pitch with two outs. Breaking ball drops in for a strike, and now an exaggerated shift with two strikes as Carpenter is more towards the shortstop position, and the three infielders on the right side. 0 oh 2 the count, and O oh is a strike away. Striking out the side. And he's done it. 
Sing one oh. His second major league appearance, and he strikes out the side here in the sixth inning. Impressive fashion. We head to the seventh. Tied up, it's 5-5. Five five. Honda home run inning of a Cardinals player hits a home run. The Gateway Honda dealers donate a thousand dollars to the Make a Wish Foundation. You know, ideally you wouldn't have Wong hit against a lefty, but the only man from the right side for the Cardinals is their backup catcher, Eric Fryer. So four lefties on the bench, and the Cardinals go with Colt Wong to face Tony Watson, one of the top lefties in all of baseball. Well, I think he, he'd be hard pressed. Maybe his secrets would be giving him a run for the money, but. Those are the two elite ones that you think of as a setup man. Tony Watson's always the eighth place or the eighth inning man, but on Sunday he did the same thing. He came in on the seventh inning to get these left handers at the bottom of the order and then turn it over. So you're getting a couple lefties right away. And Wong pinch hitting here for O, who was sensational, and then you got Carpenter. But they're doing this now, Dan, because they got Felice, who has closing experience, so. They can bring Watson if it if it works out like you know you you're always managing ahead in the game and you can see that you're going to get a left hander to face here and then with Carpenter left handed you've got your lefty specialist facing at least two left handed batters. Watson is part of our Chevy call to the pen. A lot of talk that Watson could be the eighth inning man Camonero could be but Feliz even shortens games even more and they've got Jared Hughes they expect him back by the end of the month so this bullpen will get even better yeah get on the disabled list and it just makes it that deeper now the reclamation project and police for for a surge one two pitch one a base hit into right center field and the Cardinals leadoff man is aboard Boy, that, that's got to be the world off his shoulders right now Getting a hit against a very tough lefty. And here you see the breaking ball does not give. Takes actually a pitch away and just kind of hooks it, takes it up the middle as they had the second baseman playing for the pole. Saw that shot there of Bill Miller. And he puts his hands on the runner, then he'll back away. And Billy was telling me he's going over every potential scenario. For the runner, slowly hit left side, right side, line drive, fly ball. What are we doing? Think. And also with this, as Freeze will take it and gets Carpenter, the sacrifice is good. And the Cardinals put a man in scoring position. First time they've had a man in scoring position since back in inning number five. Um, both these managers will ask some of their core players to give themselves up at times. Old managers know they have the trust of their team that they can say, okay, give yourself up for the better of the team. Try and advance runners. And Carpenter did a great job right there. Biscotti 
They struck out. Picked up an RBI single in the third, a triple in the fifth, and a run scored. Runner at second, Colton Wong. First pitch is a strike to Piscotti. Ball game started with a left-hander in Jonathan Nice. Then Camonero, and now Watson, another lefty. What may surprise you, many times we talk about the issues the Cardinals have had with left-handed pitchers. However, last two years, the Cardinals have the sixth best record against left-handed starters. Nine games above 500. A little bit surprising. Yeah. They started turning around last year. And oh, and to the count. Lots of room. And the gap in the outfield and left center and on the right side of the infield. But Scotty could break open a 5 5 game. And now Watson wants to talk. You know, I was go back to what you were saying about Bill Miller going through every scenario. Reminded me of what you could talk to about any major league coach today, and they'll say one thing is don't ever assume the players know the situation. So it is a little repetitive, but the more they hear it, hopefully they'll retain it. But you do have to go through all those scenarios. The 0 2 now to Steven Piscotti. Inside. Well, Chris Maloney. Handles the outfielders. Last inning, dictated by count. Not to start to move. The one-two. You know, video is such an important part of the game too. And Billy said that internally, in the, the idea is that they have the clock on a pitcher. From the time that the ball leaves his hand to the catcher for slide step from the stretch and also the throw over. So going into a game, Bill Miller knows that time and he's always clicking over there to get the times right for those pitchers to see if they can get an edge. Lots of through that pitch with the second baseman standing at the bag trying to sneak in behind Colt Wong at second. You don't want to throw a pitch with your Defense out of position. Tells you a little bit how cold it is. 3 2 pitch to Steven Piscotti. On its way. Inside. Good at bat. He's on base for the third time tonight. Was it a strike? Plaza Tire Fox Tracks. Let's take a look. Cervelli sets up inside and it looks like they missed and they yep. did. And that's one of the reasons why they like Piscotti second hole or even a potentially a leadoff man at some time because of his great on base percentage. Runners at first and second for Holiday. Picked up an RBI in the third and another in the fifth. Another game in which the Cardinals have had their opportunities with runners in scoring position. Well, we know Watson is so effective against left handers but give you an idea of a, such a clutch hitter as Holiday. Holiday is just two for 13 against Watson. Ninth at bat for the Cardinals with a runner in scoring position. The 0 1 pitch to the Cardinal left fielder. One ball, one strike. All they grounded out to short. Then in the third, grounded out to second. That brought in a run. A lead miss Diaz. They grounded to short. It was an error on Mercer, but an RBI. The 1 1. One ball, two strikes. 
On deck, Randall Grinchin. Kind of look at Watson's mannerisms out there, and here Savelli is going to go out and talk to him again, but this doesn't have that aggressiveness that you kind of noted with him. I don't know if he said something while trying to get the tweets, but you know that Clint Hurdle has talked to and Watson and told him, you know, hey, this is the possibility this year at times I will be bringing in the seventh inning. Still very important, and, it, and you're the pitcher of record right now in the tie game. The next two, Holiday on one and two. Same location that was ball four on Piscotti. Watson working very slowly here in the seventh inning. Just not accustomed to seeing it. Of course, I'm not used to seeing runners against him either. The more pitches Holiday sees, the better look he's going to get. Check swing. He went. Gibson was the arbiter, said he did. Here's Grinchick. Randall to start this year. One for seven with five strikeouts. Had a very good spring among the leaders in average in hits. Trying to get on track. 0 1 pitch inside. We've seen the Pirates really bust him in in this series. Right. And see him now, you know, at least taking those inside pitches instead of jamming himself. So he's hit over 300 against them in the last couple of years. 1 1. Lifted in the air to McCutcheon. Cardinals will strand two. Time to stretch. McCutcheon leads it off. When we come back in game two of this series, all tied up, it's 5-5. Five, five.
Rolls in at PNC Park and some key plays here tonight to get you caught up in this 5-5 game. Major League debut, Major League first hit for Alemis Diaz. First at bat, Steven Piscotti showing off a tremendous arm and right as he gets Andrew McCutcheon. And Jed Jerko, his first Cardinal home run, 50th of his career. The Cardinals now turn to their left-hander, who was so good a year ago and the year before that, Kevin Segrist, making his 2016 debut with a hard throwing lefty. And he gets the heart of the order. McCutcheon, Freeze, and Marte. Jed Jerko moves from second base to short. Diaz is out. Colton Wong stays in the game after singling off of Tony Watson. Well, it's the second game, so we got to see Segrist. Led the, mate, led the National League in appearances last year, pitching 81 games and a 162 game schedule. The big difference when you watch Segrist this year, the curveball. I asked him yesterday, how have you developed this? And he said, three pitchers have really helped him out. Lance Lynn, Tyler Lyons, Adam Wainwright. McCutcheon's had a big night, fouls it back. He said Lance Lynn showed him initially different grips and what feels comfortable you go with it. They worked with that in Jupiter. Tyler Lyons said to back off the slider grip and the positioning of the thumb for the curveball. And then he said he went to old Uncle Charlie to find out how you finish it off. And he said, you have to know your break, then start thinking about it. Where do you want to start it? There's another pitch at 86 that's hit out of play. So not using the slider, he said he just lost the feel for it, had a lot of trouble with the location of that pitch. And he said the number one thing for him mentally the curveball is a pitch I feel is as effective as my fastball. Mentally, I'm confident with it. And a strike out of a cut four, four strikeouts in a row, three by O, and then now one by Segrist. Set up inside and just threads it right down there on the black. Number right handed batters. Were no problem for Segrist. His problem was getting lefties out, and that's why he's gone with the curveball to have that pitch to, to neutralize the lefties. Here's David Freeze, who is two for three with a run scored. He also said he went back and looked at video of arm slot with the slider, felt he dropped it a little bit. And he said at this level you give away any kind of motion any detection that you're throwing an off speed pitch or a slider a curveball you're in trouble and right now all we'll see is the fastball and the changeup. Well what you're saying too is if you drop that arm slot a little bit then you're getting underneath it instead of having the tilt or downward action it just kind of slides and becomes that much more hittable. Here's the 0 2 to David Freeze. Carved him up. O and Segrist have combined to strike out the last five Pirates. The bullpen has come in and recorded seven consecutive outs. Lions, O, and now Segrist. Well, you know what you like here, too, is Segrist at times pitching every other day, but also at times you get the pitch count up there a little bit. Very efficient. Two strikeouts on seven pitches. And he is our Chevy call to the pen. Starling Marte. Marte lined out to the wall and right, hit into a double play, and then walked with a runner in scoring position. 1 0 pitch. Fly ball. Shallow right field. Piscotti wants it. He's got it. We head to the eighth and the bullpen, the story of the night thus far for the Cardinals. We're tied up 5 5.
Pat and Brad, it's a good one here at PNC Park. 5 5 our score. Cardinals have been out hit 10 6. It's our Chevy call to the pen. And Neftali Feliz, a former closer, trying to regain that form here with the uh, Pirates. Did pitch Sunday, an inning of relief, struck out one, only took 11 pitches to get through it. Nice went five, Caminero pitched the sixth, Watson the seventh, and now Feliz here in the eighth. David Fries picked up the triple off Neftali Feliz, that famous. Game six of the National League Championship, or rather the World Series of 2011. And now these two are teammates. Feliz was the closer at the time with the Texas Rangers and Ron Washington. Yadier Molina leads it off here at the top of the eighth. Ball one. Molina has popped out to short, grounded out to short, and struck out swinging back in the fifth. The Cardinals collectively have struck out nine times tonight, coming off game one and striking out 14 times. I think we've got a, a glimpse, though, into the immediate future of these two teams in the Central and just how good both bullpens have the chance to be. Oh, no doubt about it. And these clubs are going to be fighting back and forth all season long. That's pulled foul. On the breaking ball there in his little bout in front. Mike Matheny talked about these two teams and the even matchup. Since 2013, the Cardinals only two games better than the Pirates. And he said, it reminds me of when I was playing, and it was St. Louis and Houston. Two clubs that really respect each other, but great competition. Oh. Molina is hit by the pitch and a ball that got up and in. Second Cardinal that's been hit in this game. The other was Brandon Moss back in the fourth. I never like to see Yachty get hit, period, but how valuable is to the ball club. He had that play right above the bicep, but he does have that pad there. Kind of got the top of it, but Cold night like this, you don't have to put the ethyl chloride on it, just stick your arm out. That'll freeze it, huh? That'll freeze it. So here's Moss, ground rule double he hit to left center back in the second inning. He was hit by a pitch. It also grounded out to first against Caminero last time up in the sixth. Moss got the start today at first base. Matt Adams still on the bench along with Greg Garcia, Jeremy Hazel Baker. That trio from the left side, Eric Fryer from the right side. The shift is on in an 0-1 pitch. Molina with maybe a two-step lead. Kind of looked at Yachty on the first pitch, was trying to time it. Kind of a walking lead and maybe wanted to take off. Sometimes you'll see that delayed steal from Yadier sure. Molina, too. Well, they know he can't run. So, you know, I mean, you just kind of you take advantage. Of a guy like Yadier could take advantage of the opposition not thinking he'll ever run. So the shift was on and David Freeze was positioned perfectly. Absolutely. That's the third baseman right at the left of your screen. You see right there. Really tough play. You couldn't tell if he 
trapped it or if he caught it on the line. But either way, you see him go ahead and complete the double play, and all of a sudden the Cardinals' little threat has been aborted. Start over. Jed Jerko, third baseman David Freeze is guarding the line. First pitch is strike. Two right a homer for Jerko back in the fourth. Called out on strikes in the sixth. Flying out to shallow right first time up. Why not hit another one? Here's the 0 1. West Virginia has had a lot of memories of growing up as a kid, probably thinking he's going to play for the Pirates. Well, go back and dream about the time you didn't like him and you hit a home run against him. Broxton getting loose in the Cardinals pen. The 1 1. Now 1 and 2. Yeah, Dan, it's one of those situations where you have to get Rosenthal in this game. He had not pitched since last Wednesday. But you're hopeful that you can have Broxton come in the eighth and then you have Rosenthal close out the ninth and close out a victory. Here's a 1 2. Cardinals have struck out 10 times tonight. We move to the bottom of the eighth as this game is defined by the bullpens. St. Louis Cardinals baseball on Fox Sports Midwest is brought to you by Bud Light. Raise one, two, right now. Two of the better teams in baseball squaring off an early season matchup with the Pirates and the Cardinals. Two bullpens on display tonight that are pitching quite well. Most wins in Major League Baseball. This is since 2013. The Pirates just six back of St. Louis, then L.A., Kansas City, and Washington. We're all talking about postseason teams in the past, and those five teams very well could head to postseason yet again. Chevy called for the pen, and it brings us to Jonathan Broxton. It's Cervelli, Polanco, and Harrison. Cervelli, last time up. Face Tyler Lyons, first man that Tyler saw back in the fifth inning with one out, the bases loaded. And hit a fly ball to center as Chris Maloney continues to set the defense in the outfield. Moving over, it was Holiday that moved just a moment ago to his left. Still a big gap out of left center. Well, they're shading, but. With the center fielder towards right. Still pretty good gap either way. Broxton came over at the trade deadline, did a nice job. Got another contract with the Cardinals. A two year deal and a 1 1 pitch. Check swing. 
did not go. Singleton scored back in the second. Rounded out to short in the fourth. On two and one, the next two, Cervelli. That time he did go. Evens it up at two and two. Cervelli's 0 for 4 against Broxton. Good thing we don't have to see Marte. Marte is 5 for 6 with a pair of home runs against Broxton. Is guarding the line. Trying to see Moss over at first base off the line. The big gap in left center field. Grichik shading him the opposite way. And it's a strikeout for Broxton. Why not? Another power arm coming out of the bullpen. It's nine in a row set down by the Cardinals' pen. About O came in and struck out the side. Then you had two strikeouts from Segris. Now the first one, Broxton faces a strikeout. Tyler Lyons, kind of the unsung hero in a way here tonight, too. Bases loaded, one out, only one run came in to score. So he took over for Michael Walker, who went four and a third, gave up 10 hits, five runs. Then it's been Lyons, O, Segris, and now Broxton. Here's Gregory Polanco. Couple of RBIs tonight. Well, the Pirates have combined to strike out nine times. If you think about uh, pirate hitters that you got to fear right now, one of them is going to be Polanco. Ball has been jumping off his bat on Sunday and again tonight. Two and zero the count. RBI triple for Polanco back in the second. Struck out on a pitch up in the zone in the fourth. And an RBI and a sack fly in the fifth. The 2 0 pitch. Hits it the other way, slicing towards Holiday, and he's there. Two down. Part of that big weekend against the Cincinnati Reds is the Adam Wainwright bobblehead that'll be Saturday, April 16th. The day before, it's the Bush Stadium 3 giveaway. The following day on Sunday, the Yadier Molina jersey giveaway. This is presented by Nathan's Famous and Schnooks, cardinals.com slash promotions. And again, seats remain for opening day, Monday. I'm sure you saw the, the two-player bobblehead of Yadier Molina and Adam Wainwright embracing, closing out on That'd be the 06. 06 World Championship team. Team that had a record of 83 and 78. We, we don't talk about that. We don't talk about that. But got hot at the right they time. It sure did. Got healthy and got hot. It actually was the worst record the Cardinals had posted since 1999. And yet they're the team that wins the World Series after back to back 100 win seasons. 100 plus in one case in 2004. Right, it just goes to show you you could have a wild card team get hot at the right time. Not the sole reason, but one of the reasons why they went to the double wild card to kind of penalize a team that got hot at, at the end, became a wild card team and could go right on through. 06 team had two eight game losing streaks and a seven game skid. In the air. Out to left. Holiday with room. Puts it away. Bullpen of the Cardinals has been magnificent here tonight. We head to the ninth, tied at five.
Well, the bullpens have been outstanding. And now it's Melanson, one of the top closers in all of baseball. Tie game at home. Bring him in here in the ninth. It's 5 5. The Cardinals bullpen is set down 11 in a row. Melanson is part of our Chevy call to the pen. He blew the shutout on opening day, allowed one run on two hits, hit a batter, 25 pitches. And against the Cardinals, he has been terrific. You go from 2013, 14, and 15, 20 games, a total of four earned runs in 20 and two thirds. And a tough test here for Hazel Baker. So he'll pinch hit for Jonathan Broxton. The Pirates have used Jonathan Neese, their starter for five. Camonero pitched the sixth, Watson the seventh, Feliz the eighth, and now Melanson here in the ninth. Hazel Baker, a non roster invite to your spring training, made the ball club, showed power, showed speed, had a major league debut on Sunday, and I thought he got run up on a pitch that was, a, you know, outside, but. Sometimes the umpires want to say rookie. Let's see how you react to this call. And I was talking to him about it in the elevator and he said hey that's the way it goes. So he took it the right way and he's ready for this assignment. That was against Tony Watson in the seventh inning. Mike Matheny said it was in a way unfair for him to be put in that spot against a tough lefty but as you say and as Hazel Baker says hey it's part of the game well, and, and now you're going against last year's major league leader in saves with 51. Well that's it. Here's the 0 2. And on the hands and fouled back. That was a nice story about Hazel Baker yesterday last year was released from the Dodgers. Spent 12 days at home. Standing by the phone, it never rang. Twelfth day, it finally the Cardinals rang, and boy, he made an impression through the minor leagues and did so with the major league club this spring. The 0-2 left in the pens for Pittsburgh. Two left-handers, Corey Lukey and Kyle Lobstein. Ryan Vogel's song nearly made the rotation. Works from the right side for the Cardinals. They have their closer Trevor Rosenthal Seth Manus and the rule five edition Matt Bowman. Here's a one two pitch. It's off the plate. Hazel Baker as you see. Rosenthal like I said hadn't pitched since last Wednesday so you got to get him in there but let's get him a lead to protect. Hazel Baker played 751 career minor league games with Boston. The Dodgers and St. Louis, 239 career stolen bases in the minors. The 2 2. Hazel Baker, little flare down the left field line. It is fair. Steps on the bag at first, on his way to second base. Jeremy Hazel Baker. I just told you how many stolen bases he has, so you know he can run. That is his first major league hit. And it's an extra base hit, and let's hope. They'll have a chance to score the winning run in this ball game, break the 5 5 tie. So, a couple of first major league hits in this game for the Cardinals, one by Aledmus Diaz. Or Diaz, that was back in the third and a base hit to right. And this one, a flare, little bloop double down the left field line for Jeremy Hazelbaker. Congratulations. Trying to protect a little bit, got that inside out stroke out there, wall. He got a base hit his first time up. That was against the tough lefty Watson. Wong Bunting puts it in the air and Melanson makes the catch. Boy, so often and you have guys that can run a little bit, even have running should be part of Wong's game. They have a tough time sacrificing. Ball up and in, designed to get a pop up. The batter will jerk back at. Colton Wong just didn't get his job done. Ball up there, so easy to see yet. You gotta have that barrel. Well, that's why you're defensive too. So I mean, a lot of times pitchers just throw groove the ball in there trying to you know, give them a, a punt 
ball to bunt, and then they take the out. But I like it that way, trying to defense it. Before the pitch, I was curious as to whether or not they would bunt or let him try to drive him in, or at the least pull it pull to the, the, the right ball. side. Regardless, here is Carpenter with a runner at second base. He takes a pitch low. Tough running play for Hazel Baker, too, because he's out there. And if you aren't paying attention, you get yourself doubled off. He recognized it, got back ahead of the throw from Melanson. Carpenter, two for 10 against this right hander. And a 1 0 pitch. After a long look by Melanson. Matt has struck out twice, walked and scored, and sacrificed back in the seventh inning. He talked about it when he first made it to the big leagues, one of the rare players that does not wear batting gloves, and probably not an easy thing to do with the weather that away the way it is here tonight. Gets a pitch in on the hands, he'll pay for it. Tough spring for Matt, but hopefully he'll come through here. The 2 0 pitch. With Scotty on deck, he's had a good night on base three times. Count was in his favor, 2 0. Looking for a certain pitch, got the breaking ball, didn't offer at it. Wasn't what he was looking for. I feel pretty shallow for a guy that hit 28 home runs a year ago. 2 1 pitch to Carpenter. Here it comes. We know he's got the great eye, Carpenter. Drew a walk on the opening day, and that guy is doing his best Al Rabaski impersonation. <laughs> it's pretty weak. If that's all I got, right? <laughs> 81 walks a year ago, 95 to lead the league. The year before that, 72 in his first full season. But I'd love to drive in Hazel Baker here. 3 1 pitch. Ooh, good cut. He's sitting up there looking for that fastball. Got it, had a cut at it, but count full. I thought last year, Carpenter was rung up so many times early in the season. And I know he's got such a good eye, but it just wasn't. Wasn't in sync with the outplayed umpires, and most of the time it proved out that he was correct, that Carpenter was correct, and not swinging at those pitches. It was important on Sunday that the Cardinals did get a run off of Melanson. The 3 2 pitch instead of check. The survey show that he had more strikeouts and then strikes out of the zone called on him more than any other hitter in baseball. It's a byproduct of working counts, taking pitches. I thought it was an extraordinary amount early in the season. The 3 2 pitch. Go ahead, run at second. Carpenter breaks his bet. Little floater into shallow right center catch made by McCutcheon. Cardinals need a two-out hit from Piscotti. Jams his bat, breaks it. Ball up and in, not exactly what he wanted, but a little floater. Trevelli out there saying, hey, Piscotti's been swinging the bat very well tonight. Two hits, RBI, a walk, got first base open. This is the 12th plate appearance with a runner in scoring position for the Cardinals this evening. 
such an athletic outfield. You see how shallow they're playing here for Steven Piscotti. Will they get burned? Two outs. Hazel Baker, the runner at second base. First pitch to Piscotti. Pull foul. Looks like Scott has never faced Melanson. The man on deck is one for eight against him. That's Holiday. This will be pitch number 15 of the inning. The Pirates will have the bottom of their lineup coming up. One and one the count. Hazel Baker stays put. Lanson, he threw near 25 pitches on Sunday. Pirates bench, little help here. Listen in. Ford trying to help that catcher, let him know what's happening with the base runner. Is he going or not going? Twenty six thousand forty nine comes alive. I was trying to stay warm. Piscotti fly ball left field late break Marte is there. A chance to win it for Pittsburgh. When we come back he's now all smiles. Relax it's only game two. Open for the Cardinals. It started with Tyler Lyons. Bases loaded. Only one out. He got two quick outs. One run did score. That was charged to Michael Waka. All told, it has been Lyons, O, Segrist, Broxton. Three and two thirds. They have combined to strike out six. No walks. It's been 11 up, 11 down. And it will not get any easier coming up here for the Pirates as they'll have to face Trevor Rosenthal. But this bullpen has been sensational here tonight highlighted by O in the sixth inning strike out uh, striking out the side uh, Trevor Rosenthal comes in the Cardinal closer and what a closer he's been 48 saves last year to set a new Cardinal single season record only Cardinal to have back to back 45 save seasons plus and here he is after appearing in 68 games last year Jordy Mercer leads it off. First pitch hit out of play, 97 on the gun. From the Cardinals hard throwing right hander. Mercer reached on a, just stuck the bat out on a base hit to back in the fourth. Struck out against O in the sixth and also grounded back to the pitcher. The Pirates have 10 hits tonight, all those hits against the starter for the Cardinals, Michael Waka. No balls, two strikes. Rosenthal 
at 48 saves and 51 chances. Remember the weekend right before the All-Star break, the Cardinals came in here to Pittsburgh, and the only time that Trevor really had a bad weekend, say almost back-to-back -back games, and it was Gung that got it. McCutcheon got him on one game too. Yeah. It's 10 strikeouts for the Pirates in their lineup tonight. Boy, he's just trying to go up there. That ball just taking off and have no chance. And Trevor's velocity trying to hit a ball there. Michael Morris is going to pitch it here. He's supposed to be part of the platoon at first base. He'll play first when they face a left-handed pitcher. Fastball, 97 and a strike. As hard as Rosenthal is throwing, you can see that the outfield is now shading him to the opposite way. Chris Maloney moving his outfielders over, and Morris late with that swing again at 97 from Rosenthal. A big long swing that, if he connects, he could do a lot of damage, but should have some problems against Rosenthal and his velocity. Goodbye, Morris. Looking at a call third strike on the outside corner. I was worried about Rosenthal who had pitched since last Wednesday. Worried about him coming in throwing strikes. Well, those are perfect strikes. 98 on the black. Eight strikeouts from the relievers here tonight. Jaso. Singleton scored back in the third. Two ground outs and a strikeout, one for four on the night. Oh, one pitch. Get the feeling out before the summer is through. We're going to be back here walking across the Clemente Bridge, and someone is going to try to sell us a hat with that kind of hair hanging out of it. <laughs> Probably. Are they wasting their time? Yes, they are. <laughs> We're not buying. Either he hasn't showered in a, in a month or he had his hair braided recently. The two one. Three and one. Lowest pitch he's thrown tonight is 96 miles an hour. So everything between 96 and 98. And a ground ball hits sharply to Colton Long, and he puts it away. So extra innings, first time in 2016. We head to the 10th. Presented by the authority of the St. Louis Cardinals. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form in the accounts and descriptions of this game. It may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the St. Louis Cardinals.
along with Jim Hayes, Al Roboski. I'm Dan McLaughlin. It's 5-5 as we move to the top of the 10th. You just wonder if the Cardinals would be tempted to send Rosenthal back out there for another inning. Well, you got to tell him now that that's a possibility. So hopefully the Cardinals, what we're thinking is if the Cardinals got a run, you could run him back out there. They have the game tomorrow, but they do have another off day. Sean Rodriguez, their super utility guy, is over at first base. And Lobstein, who does have some major league experience, last couple of years with Detroit, will be the next pitcher. Kyle Lobstein actually made some starts last year. Tenth inning, 5 5, and here's Holiday. First pitch, take it for a ball. Matt tonight, two RBIs. One was on a ground out, the other on an air. Inside. And getting down to the part of the bullpen where managers are hoping you won't have to get to, especially in an extra inning game. They have Luke Key and Vogel Song available out of their pen. Left on the bench for the Cardinals, Matt Adams, Greg Garcia, Eric Fryer. So you got the lefties down there and your backup catcher that you don't want to use. So they will turn him loose here on 3 and 0. Oh. And then he looks at a strike. Nice for five innings, Cabanero the sixth, Watson the seventh, Feliz the eighth, Melanson the ninth, and now Lobstein. 3 1 pitch to Holiday. And it's a leadoff walk. Boy, what does that lead to? Extra innings, leadoff walk. More times than not, that's going to be the start of a winning rally. Lobstein says he's got some experience. He's 26, turned 27 on August 12th. Last year, he made 13 appearances for Detroit. 11 of those were starts. ERA just under six. So Greg Garcia will be the pinch runner for Matt Holliday. Cardinals have used Wong, Hazel Baker, now Garcia off the bench. Got Matt Adams, and you got your backup catcher. Adams can go play first base, and Moss can go to left field. Well, let's just get a run and worry about defense later. Just wonder on a cool night. It's not like Greg Garcia is Vince Coleman. No, it's you know you just cool night. The injuries that Holiday dealt with a year ago. You're just being almost. To the point of being extra cautious with him. Agreed? Possibly, yeah. That's not the easiest running assignment. Somebody been sitting there cold for three hours. Crowd a bit restless. He falls behind on Gritchick, 2 0. Oh. This is about the time that Randall Gritchick will get a pitch and turn on it and pick up that first home run of the year. Richick has struck out twice, fly to right, fly to center. Hits it in the air, gets underneath it, and a fly ball to center field. Catch made by McCutcheon. Garcia back to the bag at first. I liked where you were going there, partner, but. 2 0 pitch, you're thinking you're not yeah. going to get a strike after what he did with Holiday. Randall's just a tick off. That's it. That's it, man. The weather could be a factor, all kinds of things. Pressing a little bit, trying to impress. Molina was hit back in the eighth, raced on a double play. He's popped out to short, routed to short, and struck out. Does Tommy Pham make the sixth Cardinal on the DL? Already, you see where the Dodgers have 10 players yes. on the DL and key members of the rotation too. 
Runner at first is Garcia. Outfield is straight away. Molina looks at strike one. And I think they cut like $50 million off the Dodger payroll. Still, it's either one or two. And I remember last year thinking for a payroll almost at $300 million, they had a lot of holes. Agreed. Oh, one pitch. One ball, one strike. Cardinals have a right hander getting loose in their bullpen. They are left with Bowman and Manus. Bowman would be your long man. Manus, though, you know, he could give you Manus. an inning or two. Manus is, and you know, you got to get him straightened out. Best way to get a sinker ball to straighten out is to let him pitch. They used to say they like to pitch tired, but players today dispute that. Crowd wanted that one called, but it looks like a good, uh, a good ball call by Hunter Windlestead. Two and one, the count on Molina. And a shoot to right field, almost swinging with the balls of the catcher's glove. Yachty could be two. Freeze to second. Double play. The All Star break. Nick Greenwood would love to forget this. 2015, and a weekend that was lost for the Cardinals against the Pirates with some walk off wins. One of those thanks to Andrew McCutcheon. And here he is as we move to the bottom of the 10. 5 5 our score. Chevy called for the pen, and the Cardinals turn it over to Seth Manus. So one man left in the bullpen now that's Matt Bowman. This bullpen has been just sensational here tonight. Tired 14 in a row. Adams goes to first base, Moss goes to left field, and then you put Manis in the three hole. That's a holiday spot. So he'll be able to pitch a couple innings before we see the rule five if it goes that long. And away we go, bottom of the tenth. McCutcheon. Freeze. Marte. McCutcheon, three hits tonight. As a matter of fact, he has three of the ten. All ten hits against tonight's starter for the Cardinals, Michael Waka. The 1 1.
about this time last week in spring training Seth Manis went on to the backfields to get more work against minor league hitters just to get the innings that he was looking for as he said his sinker had kind of betrayed him a little bit needed to get more work to get a feel for that pitch. I always thought that spring training was always geared for the starters. Ground ball left side against the shift. One away. Matt Adams has taken over at first base. Moss is in left. In terms of what's left on the bench for the Cardinals, it is their backup catcher, Eric Fryer. That's it. But, you know, it seemed like uh, today the starters don't want to throw the amount of innings that the, the starters would back in the 70s, 60s, 50s. But, you know, now you have to contend with the minor league, six year minor league free agents that get an invite to spring training. But I always used to sit there and say, I wanted to throw start a game in the minor leagues and throw five six innings. So I understand completely what he's talking about and I agree with him. Freeze is two for four tonight one ball one strike. See all that contact you made there. I did. <laughs> Crowd liked it. I think he was thinking about throwing the crowd in a different way though. Carpenter guarding the line at third. Outfield is deep. Two strikes on David Freeze. You see Seth starting to get the ground balls. You know it's starting to pay off for him. I'd rather have it bounce like that than leave it belt high. When his ball gets up. We're going to see base hits, line drives. When it gets down, you'll see ground ball outs. And a strikeout of David Freeze. The Pirates have combined to strike out 12 times against Cardinals pitching. Nine of those strikeouts have come from the relievers. 16 in a row. Starling Marte. Strike one. If we get to the 11th, Brandon Moss will lead things off. Or rather, Matt Adams. No, Moss. Here's the 0 1. A little bit low. Two balls, one strike. Marte lined out to the wall and right, routed into a double play, walked, and also flied out to right. 2 1 pitch. 2 and 2. What well, Maynus wastes no time. He gets the ball back on the rubber, says, Let's go. Especially on a cold night like this, as infielders appreciate it. They got to be ready. 2 2 is fought off and hit out of play. <laughs> 2 2, a ground ball into short, taken there by Jerko, flips over to Adams. We head to the 11th. Good work by Seth Manus.
11th. Brandon Moss leads it off for the Cardinals. Lobstein will work his second inning out of the pen for the Pittsburgh Pirates and Flynn Hurdle. Moss's double tonight was hit by a pitch, scoring a run back in the fourth. Grounded out to first and also grounded into a double play. Cardinals have hit into two double plays tonight. We've seen Nice, Caminero, Watson, Feliz, Melanson, and Lobstein for his second inning of work. And Moss does have a little history with him. Three for five. Off of Lobstein. So hopefully that trend will continue. Jed Jerko is on deck. A game that has been defined by these bullpens. Two of the best coming into the season, on paper at least, in baseball. And they've shown us why tonight. Oh, also, you know, you kind of looked as good as the Cardinal bullpen was a year, a year ago. Third best in the National League to the Pirates best. I say the Cardinals have a chance to have a better bullpen this year than they did a year ago. Watching O tonight, you'd say absolutely. We initially made that comment when we thought Walden was going to be healthy, but we're still. O faced three batters, struck all three of them out. He's got two big league innings, five strikeouts. The 2-1. Two, 2-2. One. Two and two. Cardinals have just two hits against this bullpen. The Pirates with no hits against the St. Louis pen after four and two thirds, rather four and a third from Waka. Moss strikes out to start the 11th. Top of it. It's two games and 25 strikeouts in this lineup for the Cardinals. Got a record last year and we're hoping to uh, avoid having the strikeout games like we had a year ago. Here's Jerko. Fly to shallow right. Two run homer back in the fourth. Pair of strikeouts. The feeling the Cardinals have had pretty good chances against this lefty because he's falling behind on every hitter. And again, he falls behind here, 2 0. Oh. Now 3 0. Oh. It's not the formula you want to fall behind hitters. Very few pitchers can get away with that. That's a Cardinal fan now yelling. Must be your family. And a base hit out to left for Jed Jerko. His second hit tonight. Swing a 3 0. And a pitch, he liked it. Now Matt Adams will get a shot. See Jerko 3 0. He was ready for a pitch. It's left handers a lot better than right handers. Back in Matt Adams. Need to see him start hitting the long ball again. First pitch is strike at the knees. Semi shift as they probably scouted and saw that drop down a couple bunts. One ball, one strike, Wong on deck. Talked about it, the weight shift that Adams is doing now a lot better staying back on a ball being able to hopefully hit a left handers break a ball or hit the ball out the opposite way. Adams had to come in that unenviable position of cold afternoon. Tommy Pham made the start. Holiday at first so Pham out Holiday shifted to the outfield Adams came in had to face Francisco Liriano who was on his game. An opening day. Jerko, your runner at first base. The one two pitch to Adams. Two and two. Pro 
approach 10:30 here in Pittsburgh on a cold, cold night. Matt told me he left three passes on Sunday. But that was a Sunday game. He would have had a ton. On the outside corner, and Adam strikes out. Bigger as the game's gone along, has it? Long pinch hit. Back in the seventh inning against the lefty that was Watson. Showed a lot of back control and picked up a base hit into right center field. Then in the ninth, after a leadoff double by Hazel Baker, he tried to bunt him to third, bunted it in the air. And he is one for two. That single back in the seventh inning. Yeah, that's I'd like to see what would have happened if he would have gotten that button down and got Hazel Baker to third, just one out. The 1 0 pitch. Carpenter on deck. Get down to this part of the order again if we get that far. All these lefties. Stuck in the lineup for Mike Matheny's club. Adams, Wong, then Carpenter. They do have one more lefty in their bullpen, Corey Lubke. And they also have Ryan Vogelsong from the right side. Cardinals have one man left on their bench. That's Eric Fryer. One and two the count in a 5 5 game in the top of the 11th with two down. <laughs> This game woke up some fans. Caught third strike on court wall. Kyle Lobstein strikes out the side. Cardinals have stranded seven in this game. Walk could pull the trigger on the breaking ball. Bottom of 11 rolls in when we come back. Two, three, bottom of the 10, his second inning of work. It's been Waka, Lyons, O, Segris, Broxton, Rosenthal, and now Manus. Cervelli, Polanco, Harrison for the Pirates. This is 18 in a row set down by the Cardinals' pen. 18. What I like, three of the four batters that Manus has faced and resulted in a ground ball in the infield. 
the other one he struck out. But when Manus is getting his ground ball, he's just getting himself dialed back in. You know, if he does give up a base hit, he can get a ground ball double play on the next one. Here's Polanco. RBI triple in the second. Struck out in the fourth. Sack fly RBI in the fifth. And fly out to left in the eighth. 5-5 game. Ball one to Gregory Polanco. The question right now, and certainly Mike Matheny, you're the manager, you're trying to think an inning or two ahead if Manus can have an effective, let's say, one, two, three inning here. Cardinals take the lead as he go back out there for a third inning. I mean, I don't think you want Matt Bowman making his major league debut with a game on the line in extra innings against the Pirates. I mean, if you have to, you do. But no, I, and I think you dial back and you think about that he went through those multiple innings with the minor leagues, so let him go. Uh, pitch count still 21 pitches. A day like this, you know, a night like this. 43 degrees. Other hour, it's supposed to drop nine degrees. But you feel invigorated. Time called before that pitch delivered. So the count is three balls and one strike. That's when you just hit the batter or throw it between the batter and the umpire. It's a free shot. And Polanco is aboard. Broke the string of. Cardinal relievers retiring 18 in a row. Now we'll get our double play ball. Polanco with 27 stolen bases last year. He stands at first. Josh Harrison at the plate. And three for nine against Manus. That's only the second walk the Cardinals have issued tonight. The other was to Marte back in the fifth. Right. First best runner since the fifth for the Pirates. Harrison, RBI in the second, single to left in the fourth, lined out in the fifth, and a fly out. In the eighth to left field. One for four on the night. This will be pitch number 23 for Seth Manus. Could be two. It's hit up the middle. Stopped by Jerko. Pick the second. Save. And Wong immediately points to the dugout, saying that he'd like to see this review. And at this point in the game, why not take that chance? That's right. You know. Ball going up the middle, Jerko trying to dive for it and get it flipped to Wong. Ball dribbled out and Wong tried to stretch out and touch second base to get the out, the force out at second base. Right there, so he tried to flip it, didn't go, and I think he's got a pretty good shot there, doesn't it? Looks like this ball up the middle. There's a dive. Look where Wong is, reaches, and very, very close. But I think his foot, Wong's foot is still on the bag. And I see it's coming off, so I don't think it's enough to to really make a definitive answer whether he's put on the bag before Polanco's. I could see if they bag. did overturn it, but it, I'm yeah. just not so sure it's definitive. And right there, I think he's safe. Yeah, I do too. Durko tried to do everything he could. It's just a question to. The umpire think his foot's on the bag when he has control of the ball. Cardinals watching the video board here at PNC Park. Cardinals are challenging this. That makes a lot of sense that you do that here. Yeah, I think it's I think it's going to be held up. Pretty quick decision.
So the winning run in scoring position. Tried to flip it, just didn't get out of his glove. Polanco's foot gets on the bag. Jordy Mercer. Two strikeouts and a single as he pulls it foul. Also grounded back to Michael Walker all the way back in the second inning. Not such a bad deal the way the way Seth is getting these ground balls. Get a ground ball double play now. First two pitches they've gone inside on him. Mercer almost tried to let that ball hit him on that one. Sean Rodriguez is on deck if we get there. Outfield a little bit more shallow now with the potential winning run in scoring position. Two balls, one strike. And Mercer is two for 13 against Seth. Rodriguez on deck, one for two, but he's been a cardinal killer last year. Two and two. Get the double play, get out of there. Get yourself a lead and get another set, get a save opportunity. Mercer could be a game winner. Polanco being waved in. Throw to the plate. Pirates take game two. They won it six to five in 11. Frustrating long night to come up empty. Walker wasn't very good, but the bullpen was phenomenal. Before they walked to Polanco, who scored the winning run, the Cardinal bullpen had retired 18 straight Pirate players. But the Cardinals couldn't get the big hit, the Pirates just did. Cardinals had a lead of five to three. Pirates come back. They tie it up at five five and they win it in 11. Jordy Mercer with the game winning hit to score Gregory Polanco. Our Budweiser player of the game. Jordy Mercer. His walk off hit here in the 11th. Fourth career walk off hit for Mercer. It's off to the post-game show with all the highlights and stats. Come join next.